Hello, what's up, everybody? It's the Rogue Itinerant Todd, whatever. Um, hey, I last uh, this morning, last <laughs> night, whatever you call it, I ordered uh, some rules. What did I order? I ordered something called this full of lead, bigger battles. And I ordered the PDF, so that's um, that's what I've got here. And um, I don't know how to say this, but um, I kind of know royalty with a fistful of lead. So let's uh, let's scroll through the pages here. So basically, fistful of lead is kind of a skirmish level game. Um, kind of start out the kind of Western, and they've expanded. You can play anything, um, any era, as you can see on the picture here. And they've expanded to bigger battles, so that instead of controlling one guy per move or whatever, you're doing a, a unit. Uh, in my case, we'll do a squad here. We're going to do a little World War II battle. But, you know, I thought I could learn it on my own, and I could, because it is pretty straightforward, simple game. But I thought, you know what, let's go over. Let's go. I was reading the, the, the play testers here, and it says the brothers Arnold, Chris and Jay. And I said, wait, I know those guys. Let me reach out to one of those guys. So look at this, everybody. I have got royalty online with me right now. I have got <laughs> not Jay from Rocky's War Room. Hi, guys. AKA, AKA Chris. Rocky's also on here. But he's just going to be kind of giving us color, color commentary and dumb comments. Now, so Rocky Mad is Rocky's War Room, where you usually see chats and rambles and what have you. Um, but he's going to be actually enjoying just painting and uh, doing that. He'll probably pop on the camera. But more we're going to be focusing on the game we're playing. So there's me. That's enough of me. So now let's switch uh, switch the camera here to see the, the fun stuff here. And there we go. So actually, we need to make it the full screen. We're not going to look at our faces because we're not the one that matters in this. Sorry about the messy background there. <clears throat> All right. So what we're going to do, uh, Chris has uh, agreed to jump on and kind of walk me through the basics. And I thought, well, why not at the same time? Uh, everyone can see us walking through the basics, and you can see how slow a learner I am and uh, what a great game it is. And you'll think, well, sorry that such a great game is being wasted on such a simple mind. And I'm taking off the robe because it is flipping hot down here. Okay. So, bigger battles. Um, Chris, what, what do you want to say about it before we kind of get started about building units and kind of going talking about that? Yes. So, if anyone that's familiar with Fistful of Lead um, will be immediately familiar with bigger battles because it's literally a, a grow a bigger brother, as it were, to Fistful of Lead. Uh, as you said, uh, Fistful of Lead is, a, in my opinion, a true skirmish game where you activate a single model at a time, that model does its thing, and then you move on to the next model. Uh, what Bigger Battles does is takes that concept, uh, and instead of running five uh, stormtroopers or five cowboys or uh, five U.S. infantrymen, you're going to run five squads or five uh, fire teams. And that squad or fire team can be, as you can see here, um, a rifle team or a tank can count as a, uh, as a, uh, as one of the, the groups, um, command units, etc. cetera. Cool. And it just allows us to play with more of our toys, but using the same basic rules concept. I so, love toys. Yes, uh, yeah. and just it's just another way of of uh, uh, playing playing the games that we love with the toys we love, but with more of them. Sweet. There's Matt, everybody. He's going to be painting for once instead of trying to lead the show. So I said he'll he'll color commentate and make comments about. Them. Or maybe we'll have him, you know, tell us how to move some of the figures, like I usually do. I'll say, Matt, what should we do with this American squad? He'll say, Go right, and I'll say, That's cool. I'm going to go left. So that's how I listen to guys when they play games with me online. Yeah, uh, let's move that squad. Up. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's, so. I'll just be quiet then. So, all right. So let's look at the first. Let's look at the table real quick. What we're what we're doing. So this is a snare, everybody, that was designed, um, and I can't remember his name right offhand, by a guy um, for Crossfire. He designed some two by two games, so two foot by two foot games, just to play at conventions and things. And I put together a little binder. Kind of put those scenarios all together in like a PDF and for Blitzkrieg Commander with his permission 
and I can put a link to that in the show notes later. So I'm basically using one of those scenarios. I expanded it to three by three just to have a little bit more movement room. And so, and basically it's, a, they're very simple scenarios um, built for Crossfire, but so far they've worked for other game systems, Blitzkrieg Commander. Um, I just used them for Iron Cross last night. You can see that video. So I figured it would work for this game as well. Um, but real, so um, this is new to Chris too. So I'll just explain kind of the, the field here. So he kind of knows how to, you know, coach me through how to play this. So this is an orchard, but really anything on this side here probably won't come into play much because this is a crest line and really, you know, it's designed just to kind of give them some space for movement. Um, anyway, so basically I'm going to start the troops up here for the game that, you know, Chris is walking us through so we can get in contact sooner. Um, so these are these round areas are for, like woods. There's some here and some back there um, and some over here. There's some minefields here the Germans have set up. How dare they? Road, obviously. Uh, and the, the house is just simple construction. We're going to say it's one story just for this playing of this. And then this is like a hedge, not bocage, but just like a hedgerow. So it does. I'd like it to, to block line of sight to some degree. And then here's a bunker. Bocage. And then here's, um, I do like to say it like that too, bocage, but it's not. It's just a bocage. And, and this is some hedge just to kind of block that. But this is a bunker, and we can talk how, how maybe to play that. So, um, and then this is just the outline of the board. And that's that. So what basically, side? the Americans have to take this house and this like thing. So basically, you have to take these, um, you know, these two areas to kind of secure the crossroads. It's called the farm. So, and this is just for show, I think. Is that three by three? This is three foot by three foot. Yep. Okay. Right. Um, you, you do know that your railroad track there is going to uh, cause a uh, cause a derailment. Oh, uh, right there. No, and over there, yeah, right there, and here, yeah. Mr. perfectionist. <laughs> hey, this might it, well, this might be France, but if it was in Germany, that wouldn't stand. That's right. Well, the partisans have got to, well, not in Germany, but the partisans have got to it. Yes, we're in France. Um, okay, so let's uh, look at the troops that I pulled out, and this is the troops that were kind of designed for this particular scenario. Um, and these actually won't be in this one here, okay. And then we can talk about what we should and should not use. All right. So you this started. Is he's already control. taken away my miniatures. What's that? Oh, so yes, you haven't even started yet. You already taken away miniatures from me. Yeah, I'm afraid you'll win. Um, all right. So this is the overall commander of the. This is a, a mortar unit, like 80 millimeter or something. This is supposed to be like an engineer, and I don't really have an engineer stand, but it's an engineer slash flamethrower, something to kind of mess with the. Um, minefields for clearance that's the purpose for them in the original scenario and then you got here uh, a platoon so no i'm sorry this is a squad of guys and this is their commander squad and their commander and of course you have a sherman that i figure will come on you know after a, a turn or two and there and then there's a forward error um, artillery commander but i didn't really see just skimming the rules chris that really artillery is a major thing. I see you can have bombardments, which I'd like to do because the scenario calls for them. Yeah. And you can kind of walk through how that works. But it doesn't look like you really need a forward air can, uh, forward artillery observer. Yeah. But we can talk through that. Uh, the Germans, the Germans, oh yeah, the Germans do have an overall commander painted by British Legion. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have, they have an 80 millimeter mortar uh, MG 42, which I assume will go in the bunker usually. They have a sniper. And they have, uh, they only have one squad. At, but, so they only have one squad defending all that area. And then they have a stew that comes on after the Sherman comes on. And they also have um, artillery in the original design of the scenario as well. So those are the troops. And I'm going to move this back up here. Lock it down. Make, try not to make everyone sick. So the cool thing is... <clears throat> This is designed for multiple eras. Oh, um, before I get started here, we got uh, Walkabout Games on here and ID Jester. So a couple of good channels there. Go check them out, everybody. Walkabout Games, eh? So he says, yes, bigger battles. Hello, guys. Uh-oh, he says, hello, Matt. Yeah, yeah. ID Jester tells us, hello guys, hope it all as well. ID Jester has um, really moved over to the wargaming side, so go check him out. He's got a video up nearly every day. 
Nope, he's asking if anyone knows if Tim will have these rules soon. I do not know. And go Team Green. Okay. I don't know if guys, you know that Tim has these rules or I think uh, uh, Wild Games has them and you can get them from there and you can also get them from War Game Vault as well. Yeah, I have no idea. Off of War Game Vault, but, and this is the PDF I got, obviously, because I'm going to try it today. Yeah, he he doesn't really do storefront type stuff. Um, you can get it directly from uh, wiley-games.myshopify.com. Yeah. Yeah, the website works pretty well. I mean, yep. I, haven't ordered, I haven't ordered anything hard copy from him, but I also, also do have um, just fiscal led the, the core rules. So everybody, so you know, I mean, so that, like I said, it covers from science fiction, fantasy to ancients to science fiction. Um, and then he has all kinds of supplements. Chris plays a lot of galactic heroes using Star Wars and they have horror. They don't have a, they have horse and musket, um, like tomahawks as well. They don't have a World War II um, supplement as it were, but you'll see how pretty easy it is to build. He provides a little bit of stats in bigger battles, and I'm sure he does in uh, his follow up as well for individual yeah. guys. So I thought the, the most complex thing was going to be the two tanks. And again, I'm trying to keep them fairly, you know, fairly even and not too complicated with I'm not I don't want to add a bunch of there's all kinds of traits you can add to them, like dead eye and good shot and all this cool stuff. But I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. Um, so let's talk about how to build this. Um, these tanks I started and I'll, let me just tell you what I put up called or some of the traits I gave him and you can kind of, you know, correct me on the things are maybe not quite accurate. So the Sherman's a 75 millimeter, so standard Sherman, but the medium, um, it's kind of how they, it seems like they set it up, um, which I think it's an eight inch move from what I was reading. Mm -hmm. I think I damage of four. And they're both tracked, obviously, so they don't take a penalty when they move through rough, but they do have to check for bogging, I believe. Right. But they don't take a pip. There's no pips off their um, movement, like a wheeled movement might take, I think it's an inch off each or something, but we'll cover that when we talk about movement. Yeah. Um, and they can only do a 90-degree turn per move, I think. Um, they are armor V. Um, which basically means that small arms can't hurt them. They can only give them pins, so they can't damage them. Um, they have, so the Sherman has two machine guns, and it looks like they should be rated as 18 inches to 36 inches, and we can talk about the ranges here in just a minute. And four dice for that, for the, each machine gun. Now the medium gun is going to be 24 and 48 inches, has an AP, which I believe is armor, piercing, I guess, two, and a burst of three, which I assume is equating for their HE. Right. And then uh, I'm going to cross it off. I put another machine gun on for Pintle, but I'm not going to worry about that, even though it's modeled on there, but just to simplify it. And then I did notice a couple traits that might be interesting, just to kind of try to make the two vehicles a little different. I added um, stabilizer on the Sherman, so there's no negative for shooting and moving, whereas the Stu will have that. And I also put loads of ammo on the Sherman just because, you know, the abundance of supplies the Americans had. So they're going to ignore their first low ammo situation, which we can talk about what that means. Um, the, so that sound okay so far on that? Yeah. Now, yeah. I did not, some of the stats I didn't see, and everybody, um, I should, man, I'm not going to take the time to pull it up, but there are stat cards that they um, have in the back that are blank. <clears throat> It would be quicker for me to show you like this, and it's not going to be the best. Oh, yeah, look how good that is. My handwriting. But these little sheets, the stat sheets and all that. So there's a few things I hadn't found yet, though, Chris. Uh, shoot. There's a space for shoot. What's supposed to go in there? What's that? There's a space for – it has vehicle traits, and it has shoot, CC, and move. So, move yeah, so, so uh, shoot is your die type for shooting – Oh. CC is your die type for close combat, and move is how many inches you move. Okay, so 
Where do I see? I did not see the shoot and see. Um, those are going to basically be based on your your character level. Uh, okay. So, in other words, if um, you're, if it's just a regular, you know, well trained, not elite type, they're going to be D10s. Okay, we'll just do that for both of them. Going yeah, on. but it is cool that you can add, and I think you. Oh, so I did see that in one place. So you can do a D twelve for like um, elites or something, right? Yeah, and, so, and there's there's some traits that will give you D twelve, like in uh, Galactic Heroes. Um, <laughs> you, if uh, one of the traits you can give them is something like uh, uh, Amazing Leader or some damn thing like that, which makes them a, a D twelve mm. uh, to shoot. Uh, or um, you know, th there's other things that will can uh, can affect that. So everybody starts off at a ten uh, for shoot and close combat. Do uh, do tanks get close combat rolls as well? Uh, that one I don't remember because Jay and I didn't play test any of the vehicle rules. Okay. So um, we'll figure that out together. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure they do. I mean, because when a tank rolls up on, you know, infantry, that's going to be close combat. You know, it's, yeah. Well, they're, they're, talk about well, not with that attitude. Oh, Bill, here come the peanut gallery comics. Uh huh. <laughs> so uh, before, so Chris is saying, be right back. Have to quickly mow lawn. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of lawn you can mow in that quick, but uh, good luck with that. Um, but also. He says, I will order some books soon. I want to try the rules for Star Wars. Uh, we don't have time to go into that, so Chris, don't even start talking. I shouldn't have even brought that into the comments. <laughs> uh, just when it's time, uh, Chris, yeah, we'll, hey, we'll, we'll chat. Yeah, reach out to yeah, reach out to him because he's done a lot of work in that area. Hey, everybody, we got modeling for advantage on here. Just swing by to say hello. We'll have to watch this one later. Roll high, dudes. Thank you, sir. I just put up a video about my uh, Iron Cross where I, I may have – it wasn't making fun. It was, um, you know, imitation is the force for some serious form of flattery. Uh, my <laughs> for this video, go check it out. He didn't. I think he's not going to sue me, so I'm I'm good. Oh, Matt, look out! Many warmuts in the house. Oh, hey, many warmut. Guess what? I am a war gamer is being uploaded right now. Hey, my dudes. Quit following me, Kaiser. ID gesture. This is just way. This is way over my head. Nah, where you get going? It's pretty. Uh, uh, it, it, it this is probably one of the easiest games to pick up and understand how to play, um, and, and it's why I love it so much. It's it is not only a fun game to play just at home, but it's a perfect convention game. Yeah, and when you know I make it a little bit more complicated, everybody, because we're talking about building out the units. That's probably the most complicated thing of it so far, from what I've seen. Just because you have to kind of yeah. and, and honestly. Just go to the back of the book, yeah, and you know it. It literally spells out. Okay, if you want to do um, sample units of vehicles, like classical to medieval. All right, we got heavy infantry, ten to twelve models. Medium infantry, ten to twelve models, and it spells out exactly what you need. If you're wanting to play like World War II, right here, it's easy stuff. Infantry squad, regulars five. Uh, it's got your traits. Tells you what uh, weapons to have. Yep. Spells it out for you. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. So, and if, like I said, you can do traits, but you know, we're trying to try to keep it as as simple as possible. I just want to do little things on the thing. All right. So that's the Sherman. Oh, uh, there's also the crew number. So I did a damage of four, and it says crew. Is that like their quality or something? Or um, so you, you didn't do the vehicle testing. So what were you seeing? So on the vehicle card. Mm -hmm. It says cruise. Is damage four? Oh, come on now. All... Cruise. Uh, I think how many are actually in the vehicle? Oh, okay. So that'd be uh, five. Is it five on an M4? Yeah, it's five on an M4. No, it is on a stube though. What if that's five? It's four or five. I, I don't remember. We'll call it five just so they're even. Yeah. Okay. So it really the stube, everything's generally the same except for um, it's hull mounted gun, so it's only got the ninety degree, um, you know, forward facing. And I also, but I, and so because I gave the um, Sherman a, a positive attribute of uh, no low ammo, right? loads of ammo, 
Um, they do say, Wiley Games says, this is not a simulation. This is a, uh, he didn't say Hollywood, but I, I see this as it's Hollywood. A, the it, Hollywood it's, movie, fun comic book version. I mean, you can tell by the cover of the book I shared. It looks like a comic book. Yeah. Um, it's, also, it's, it's, it's really, um, it, it's a way for you to play a game to tell a story. It's just have fun. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So anyway, exactly. so I, put, I put nerves of steel in the crew, crew, oh boy, crew traits. So I'm going to ignore the first shock result. When the the crew traits. Traits. Hey, I'm not the only one that does that. Yay. <laughs> uh, they have a, and they, all their stuff is the same, but they only have one machine gun. You know, it's just, uh, it's a pinnacle mounted thing up top. And then they have a medium gun, just like the Sherman. And so we did shoot a D10, close combat D10, damage four, crew five. So essentially very similar except for no no rotation. All right. Now, the squads are just infantry squads. We're not going to give them any. They're all just regulars. They're not going to be veterans or anything or green. And basically, we'll just say they are all rifles just to make it simple. And so each squad has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, here's a question I have about the um, – so I mount – on my on, on the, the Americans have this anyway. The Germans are a little different just because they have a different basing. But the leader for each squad, I don't know, I didn't understand the number of leaders that's good to have in this. You know, some games you want a lot of leaders, some games you don't only have one. So is a leader for each squad good or is that too many? Yeah, yeah, you're you're gonna have a leader uh for each for each uh maneuver element. So okay. um whether it's a squad or a um, uh, a fire team or what have you, um, perfect. You're you're gonna have a, a leader that goes with it, like a sergeant or something. Sure. So, okay. all right. Well, because really he is who gets the card, mm. and then That's he the command. Card. Then he commands his unit. Cards. What's this? See how I'm card helping activation. Out? See how I'm helping out. See that. So, so we've got. I've got. Again, these are the things that they let you print out here. So you got. I've got units, unit traits, and then I got a commander. Um, and then I have an overall commander as well. Yep. Now, they're like the mortar and the machine gun. Do they need a leader, or are they just kind of no? Leader? They will be. They will. Uh, normally, how we played it, uh, special teams like that would fall under. Um, they have their own card, but they can be mo they can be uh, motivated uh, by uh, the the overall leader also. Overall commander, okay. And now, so now there's, there's I think something you said is a little different than I was thinking. So you have a squad of nine, you know, uh, six to eight, ten guys. Is the you know separate? commander and a separate card for them and a card for the unit or does the whole unit just have one card the whole unit has a single card and so the commander i guess you'd have a separate commander with a separate card or no like if you wanted extra leadership or no that's all what was that again so would you let's say you wanted like a you know i don't know you have a you have your winter's character you know from uh, band of brothers and then you also have your, I can't remember the guy's name, that big old sergeant guy. Yeah. Sergeant Rock, for lack of a better remembrance. Um, could you have multiple commander cards within your within your army for to, you know, I don't know how that works. That's what I wasn't quite figuring out. I didn't know if it'd give you more opportunities to activate guys or not. No, it's uh, really, it's kind of a, you know, once that, once that unit is, has been activated for, the for the round they're they're pretty much done okay all right so i'm going to fill out the unit here so unit number i got a number here so that's unit one that's just going to be a typical squad for the americans and then unit two is the same Their infantry and then the commander the overall commander so let's let's work on him first so and we'll just make the german guy the same as the american guy just to again keep it simple Let's see here. I did not see the leaders. Yeah, this is the exciting video you get on the Terran Obvious channel. <laughs> I, I, find, I find them titillating. Oh, easy. 
<laughs> We're not gonna, oh, I guess we do have crude weapons, but um, all right, well, all right. I guess I could use the uh, index. Commanders and heroes. I'm going to name the American hero um, Mini Warmup. There you go. Nice. Commander Mini Warmup. <laughs> the Americans. The commander for the Germans will be Matt. Oh, geez. Okay. Sorry, it's all right. I just want oh, me no, to go think, after you. Things have been a disaster around here. Are you sure you want me to do that? <laughs> I just want many warm up to, you know, get their satisfaction of shooting guns at you. Oh, okay. Sounds good. What about Nache? We don't want to leave him out. I'll he's ref. The, he's the overlord. <laughs> and so the so really the Germans only have one um I bet he enjoys that. <laughs> I am the overlord. I'll be right so they've only got one infantry unit, one one squad to um Within the building, but they do have the machine gun. And, and they have the mortar. And the stew will come on later. Who else do they have? Oh, they have, someone, oh, they have a sniper. Um, so a sniper, would that be like a just a separate unit? Yeah, he would have his own card. All right, sniper. I think that's it. And okay. And was I correct in saying that we don't really need forward artillery because it didn't really work that way in this game? Like you need right. To... Okay, cool. All right, well, Matt, all your all your units spit on one sheet of paper. Good job. Um, mini war mat. You got an infantry unit, infantry unit, and then he has a mortar. And he also has an engineer unit. And I think that's it. Let's get really close to show me. Okay. So everything for him fits on one page. So um, how much detail do we want to go into? Pretty much they're all rifles, like I said, except the machine gun and the mortars. Um, so let's just go through there. So unit traits, I don't, I'm not going to put anything this time, I think. Just standard, unless you, unless you think I should do something different. Chris? No. No? Okay. Make, make, it, make it easier on yourself. Yep. And so they have rifles. Now they, they have uh, bazookas modeled on them, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. So, and so shoot it's D10, close combat D10. And what do they move? Six inches or something? I didn't really tell you that in the back. Uh, okay. Jay Wiley. So Jay was on uh, Rocky's War Room a couple last weeks week. Ago? Last week. Last week. So if you want to see, they, they talk all things Wiley games and just a bunch of other stuff. Ramble, as the show says. So if you want to um, kind of see what he's about and his uh, cool uh, smoking jacket. I know my robe's all great, and white, but he's got a cool smoking jacket, and he was smoking, I think. Um, all right, it looks like troops move five inches. Yes. So infantry uh, commanders move the same, I assume? Yes. Um, machine guns, five inches. Everyone's moved five on my thing. Okay, sniper, he sneaks at five inches. All right, so that's all easy. I'm not going to give you guys a trade of super running speed or anything. And engineer. Okay. And I better put, I'm going to forget who's who here, going back and forth on the sheets. And US. All right. Um, I don't think it, oh, ability. Oh, leader. I need to do something about the leader on the units. What do I need to say about them? I assume they have traits or something, or did I? What's that again? So now I'm looking at the formation card here, filling it out, and I put infantry. We're not going to do any special traits, and then there's a space for leader and ability. Um, show me where you're seeing what, what you're talking about. Okay. Let's 
So um, first I'm filling out the unit information. The yeah. unit. We'll talk about the overall commander in a minute. So leader ability on the unit. Uh, that's going to be a uh, probably a leader trait. Okay. Um, something that is specific to him off of the leader trait list. Okay. Oh, is that thing we roll? No, that's a... <clears throat> no, so let me see. Let me find your leader traits or your traits in general. Building your units, unit traits, 2021, negative traits, arming troops. So 2021 looks like. The book is fairly small, everybody. It's got some good pictures in here explaining stuff. And of course, I didn't read ahead because, you know, I fear why do that? Yeah, why do that? So these are regulars, troops. Oh, yeah, they got all kinds of, so they get everybody, they got things like agile, dodge, amphibious, armored, bloodthirsty, bodyguard. So there's some really cool, I mean, like you could totally use Band of Brothers and play out a, a battle in one of the episodes. Yeah. And give like, you know, like I was talking about, some of the, some of the leaders they show in there in winters and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you are going to have, you know, when you do the leaders, you do want to find out, you know, what type of leader they are. Okay. Um, and, and how you do that is roll a D hundred and you, on page 27 and 28, it tells you, uh, it tells you your, you know, what type of leader they are. Everything from uh, complete dullard to uh, God among men. Okay, so this is not the overall commander. This is just the leader of each unit. Right. right there. Yeah. Right, so it, just, it just gives some flavor to each unit so they're not exactly the same. Yeah, no, that's awesome. But before we do that, let's add somebody who's not a dollar. Kepi. Oh. Oh, hi. <laughs> I mean, not a complete dullard. I'm no, no. I have a dollard. Just, just part pathway. Close. All right. So everybody, there's Hippie. He joins us on Rocky's War Room. And, oh, 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 oh. Got extrovert paints, and he joins us. So go check out that channel. He's painting up some ACW for some project he's working on. It so I'm going to uh, put he and put us all go straight back to that map there. We're going to play a little uh, bigger battles there, Hippie. So listen right, and dude. learn. You do that. I'm going to I'm going to paint up some ACW. Beautiful. All right. So well, hey, you know what? You, you right, know what's so great you know what's great about Fistful of Lead and Fistful of Lead Greater uh, Bigger Battles? What's that? You can play ACW with it. What? Are they are they skirmish level or is it mass battle? Both. Yep. So <laughs> Fistful of Lead is literally skirmish. One, as I have said many times before, Fistful of Lead is true skirmish. One model gets activated. You do everything with that one model. Go to the next uh, model. Bigger Battles allows you to have instead of a single model activating you do a fire team or a uh, squad of of troops so uh whereas fistful of lead can easily represent um you know a, a small uh hand-to-hand -hand combat type skirmish easily or a shootout at the okay corral type thing uh bigger yes, battles yeah, allow Yes, I am. Uh, bigger battles allows you to do something like uh, the uh, attack on Breakcore Manor very easily. Which I did get a scenario for that from participating in the uh, Great War Games survey. So, oh, there you go. Yes, um, and if you don't mind, Todd, um, uh, my brother, not not Jay, the veteran war gamer, just. Oh, just published his uh, annual uh, chat with um, Jasper Ortage of uh, the magazine that puts that uh, uh, survey, yeah. survey out. So, cool. it just me or does he bring up his brother all the time? <laughs> all yeah. the, dude, I'm on the payroll. <laughs> all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, all the time. <laughs> it's allowed on my channel. 
So right. yeah, um, it is your channel. So if you're allowing it, allowing yeah, it. So, so check it out. Uh, it's it's uh, really interesting hearing uh, about how uh, they talk about what last year's results were. Talk about uh, what they're ex maybe expecting for this year. It's really quite cool. You're quite awesome. cool. Yes, I oh, am. Damn it! I'm, that's not I, that's not an insult. I am. I'm so cool. I'm in the bigger bat in the front of the bigger battles game book. Yes. Yes. If I have oh, yeah. one on the show with me, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna roll for the first German uh, for the German infantry platoon or infantry squad. I'm gonna roll two D10. I'm gonna roll it here live. It's the red is the front number, so it's uh, eighty. So the trait is. Fixed bayonets. If within charge range, unit must charge to close combat. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I named yeah. this leader Chris. What was that? I, I named this leader of infantry unit one Chris. What was the number? 80. Did I read that? Is that the correct one? Uh, let me find it here. Eight, zero. Fixed bayonets. If within charge range, unit must charge to close combat. He just read that. Yep. I'm, I I'm just verifying. This is verifying. All right, so I need to roll a leader for the machine gun, the mortar, and the snacker. The snacker? Oh my gosh, did I invite these guys on? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm machine gun leader. Where you said snacker, and I got very confused. 56, bro. A bit of a cad. Oh, boy. Why are you such a cad? Isn't that where you parked the car in Boston? <laughs> so, a bit of a cad is... Uh, so, normally, everyone, I'll have this kind of work done beforehand, but this is a learning lesson. So, you must retreat two full moves when losing a close combat. Come on. <laughs> Uh, say, Harry, is that, uh, did they just beat us? Yes, they did. Uh, let's get the hell out of here. Mortar, <laughs> mortar leader is a 23. 23, coward. Oh, well, the Germans are really shaping up right here. <laughs> <laughs> the infantry unit is going to charge, and then everyone else is going to run away. So the first time his unit takes a casualty, oh, my gosh. First time you take a casualty, you roll D10. Six plus, he deserts his unit. The leader deserts the unit? Oh, my gosh. Did we just lose Snitzel? Yep. Let's get out of here. <laughs> his name will be Noel. Who will I be? Uh, you're going to be the leader of the uh, – you'll be the sniper. Oh, cool. I'll be a sniper. I like being a sniper. And that lead – that number is 65, dude. So – Does that mean I did good? Did I do good? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, you're a fine fellow. Nothing more, oh. nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. That is an accurate uh, description of me. I think probably oh, the most accurate. Fine fellow. At least I can. Re at least you can remember what the trait does. All right, Americans. <laughs> oh wait, the tanks also need a leader. Literally, they don't have a slot for here. I guess not. They have their own traits. So okay. All right, let's do the American leaders. Infantry unit number one. Let's call that Bane. And his trait is, unless Chris, you want to roll D? You want to roll 100? I yeah. have no dice on me. What? Dude, I just oh. moved my office. Ooh. Let's do these excuses. Listen. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't sound good. A, 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 the, the, um, the important thing was I got my printers up and running. And I am excited about that. All right. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, Bane is lily-livered. <laughs> His unit – and I'm sorry, Bane. You're not on here. I don't even know if you're watching, but you're not on here to defend yourself. But it's just the dice, man. Just the dice. So, lily-livered means his unit must maneuver in such a way to stay out of enemy charge range when possible. Sounds about right. And what does charge range mean? We've heard that twice come up now, or come up twice now. So charge range is anything up to double your movement. 
Okay. Oh. Okay. Because see. because what what will happen is you, when you activate a unit, they can they get two actions. Both actions can be a move. So if you move five inches per activation, then if you do a move move, then you can move ten inches. If by the end of your 10 inch movement, you're within one inch of an enemy. You have charged them and are now in close combat. Okay. You're All right. right. Well, uh, this is a small table for that. So that's gonna be interesting. All right. So the next infantry unit is gonna be led by ID Jester, our, one of our viewers, and he's got a good channel. 21. Oh, is that gonna be the same? If it's the same, we're changing. Uh, oh no. Sorry, ID. Truly ugly. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so, so I he just had a rough swordsman war gamer on his channel yesterday, and I think say they were talking about the discussing these issues. So, uh, rough swordsman will love that when he hears that ID gesture is truly ugly. Now, the cool thing, ID though, is it doesn't hurt you, it's just not much to look at, but no other discernible qualities or capabilities. Wow, so you're kind of like hippie, just kind of there, but. Truly ugly. Mortar. I don't know. Who should lead the mortar? Who do we just call me truly that? ugly? Hold on a second. No, not you. No. Well, he said he was just like Hippie, and then he went on to say he was truly ugly. I feel no, like no, no. He thought the, he the thought. result of the trait. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's seven, right. seven, to make it easy, McMurray is leading the mortar team. 75. Oh, 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 man. Mortar on here. Yellow. Uh, Yellow. Oh boy. Sorry, McMurray. It's just the dice. Are any of these positive traits? <laughs> yeah. Uh, his unit so will oh, oh my gosh. His unit will only shoot at enemies when possible and cannot willingly contact the enemy. Well, that doesn't really affect him because he's gonna be the mortar and probably way back anyway. So he will not contact enemy. Okay. I guess that's not a bad treat to have if you're not, not if you're in the charge of the mortars. All right, now you're the engineer. Uh, oh, Mississippi will be the engineer. All right, everybody in Mississippi, we are uh, you're an equal opportunity army in World War II for the U.S. Perfect. And she is a 54. I hope she's not on because, oh, she, oh that's, a, she, that's a bit of a cad. We've already got that one. I want a different one. 11, two ones. Oh, boy. <clears throat> She's not around to you. Weakling. Wow. Weakling. Do not oh. take his miniature in close combat when his unit fights or her unit fights. Weakling. Ooh, she's not on. You're lucky. She probably would have told you to redraw that. Sorry. I haven't heard very much good ones here. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> well, because you're rolling this crap. Well, you're you, sir. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wrong. <laughs> You're not a nice person. All right, so we've got all of our we've got all of our uh, the thingies here. We've got all of our thingies. So we knew all the shoots are D10s. They're all firing rifles, so I need to fill those out. That chart is on page blah blah blah. That's a good that's a good page. Wait, wait, what now? We're looking for the uh, you, the uh, weapon stats for all these units now. Uh, so. A needle pulling thread. Page 10. This is much this is much easier. And it's actually kind of fun, everybody, building the, the units. So the infantry are going to be rifles. And those are going to be 12 to 24 inches. And they're going to throw one dice. So are we going to throw one dice per figure? Yes. Okay. For for every weapon type you have. Okay, cool. And how are those leaders model? Okay, let me see. Well, so the, the leaders all have submachine guns. So let's model that just for something different. And speaking in Mississippi, she just walked in. Oh boy. Shh, 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 shh. Hi. Hey, uh, which team's got the fusion gun? Um, yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay, 
Sorry, I'm not Star bad. Wars, bro. All right, so the submachine gun is a six inch and 12 inch, rolls two dice, and it's a plus one on combat, uh, close combat rolls. Yep. Um, so that infantry unit will be the same. I don't have to write this. So I don't need to write any of this on the German stuff. It's all going to be the same. So now let's look at the mortar. Oh, fusion gun. Nice. Crew, crew splash terrifying. Yeah, your your uh, mortar is going to be a 12, 24, between 12 and 24 for short range and up to 48 for long range with four asterisks. Asterisks. Yeah, what's that about? Well, oh, what that's saying is if it's less than 12. Yeah, makes sense. And it rolls one die. It has an AP3, which I think is the blast radius, right? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong. Sheet. It's a blast. It's a blast. It's a five. Rail gun. Yeah, it's a, it's a blast five. So a five inch template. Which they provide for you at the back of the book. Yes, they do. And they also provide little tokens, which I print on paper. Um, for now, I'm sure someone sells them. Um, Jay Wiley sells them. Oh, great. So, <laughs> and it's got it's got a crew stat or a crew and deadly. Ooh, what's deadly? No, you're again looking at railgun. Oh, come on, <laughs> it's it's IF. It's indirect fire. So page eleven gives you the indirect fire rules. All right, we'll look at that in a minute. I'm glad someone's checking me on this because I would have given the Americans a railgun. <laughs> Just give it to the sniper. The sniper can use the railgun. All right, so we're going to give the engineers, uh, the engineers led by Mississippi, the weakling. Um, <sighs> she's, out, she's out of the room now, so you're okay. Okay, good. Uh, flamethrower. I would recommend you don't, you don't keep saying that she's, you know, a weakling uh, when she gets back inside, though. Just give me the <laughs> call sign. Kaka! 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 Dookie dookie! So look, up here. look up here! <laughs> hey, you guys! Flame template, limited ammo for flamethrower, and terrifying. Okay, we're going to have to get that, that into action quick. All right, let's do uh, the Germans. The only thing different they're going to have is the machine gun. So, everybody, they got lots of weapons here you could use. You could really. So, that's probably a heavy machine gun. Kaka, kaka, jiggy, jiggy. <laughs> <laughs> so a heavy machine gun has a range of 18 to 36. We'll tell you why there's two numbers in a minute. Four dice. Am I reading the right line? A crude and AP1. So it can actually do a little bit to a tank, possibly. Uh, sniper, do I need to give him a, him or a special thing? I mean, he's using a rifle. Bloody freaking da, not Jay. <laughs> yep. A <laughs> mini warm. <laughs> Poor guy. Number of crew is based on the number of dice used in shooting. Hmm. I'll talk about that in a minute. So crew, I guess we'll give him a rifle. It seems like he should have a trade or something. What should we do for the, the, the sniper to make it somewhat different? Call, uh, call give, me a, a, give me the uh, the best weapon you have, and I will take down Hitler. Mounted bow. You can uh, give him the uh, conscientious objector uh, special rule. Or you can just give me that mounted bow, because that sounds awesome. Give me that railgun. Oh, even better. Do that. All right. So where do I see? I thought I saw something like dead eye or something like that. Yeah, dead eye is a good one for a sniper. All right, let's do that. Especially now that I can see again, I can. I've, oh I, yeah, that works. I can see again, so I I can get definitely get that tree. So plus one to shoot rolls. Everybody, we will get playing here in about you know forty five to uh, two to three hours. <laughs> um. So. Engineer, we got sniper, we got so I think we're good now. We have to detail out the commanders, Matt and Mini Warmut, and I think we're ready to play here. So let's talk about Matt. Let's just talk about Matt a little bit here. Oh, god, more, more, 
<laughs> Where's the commander stuff here? I'll sit that one out. <laughs> no comments from Matt or Mini Warmut on this. We're gonna we're gonna make you how we want to make you there. All right. So commanders and heroes, twenty six. I'm not looking at the comics much. I'll let everybody else look at that for now. Um. All right. So commanders, they give. Uh, plus one to any unit rally rolls. That's right. Wait, Matt's a commander? Mm -hmm. yeah, he's the leader of the German uh, group. Oh, okay. So Bummer. that many Warmack can go after him. Yeah. Within 12 inches. Uh, they can remove a shock marker. Nope, is this on the... Um... Nope, it's not. We have to build out this uh, QRS. Uh, move shock markers. What page is that? Page 26? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, got to give Matt a trait. Is uh, alcoholic or something silly on in there? Because I would enjoy that. So okay. we Here we go. We're going to give him a trait. Matt is... And that is 38. Close. Wow, that's how old I am. <laughs> so Matt is well connected. Yeah, buddy. Wait, to what? Unit gets an extra trait or upgrade to weapon. Oh. <laughs> so what kind of weapon does he have? More than likely, he's going to have um, either a submachine gun or a, uh, well, it, it doesn't make a differentiation between a carbine and a uh, a regular rifle, but. I can't have Well, it's modeled as a pistol with a guy with a submachine gun, but if, I'll give Matt a submachine gun. Oh, I wanted a chainsaw. Um, that's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Probably in pistol lead, the, the skirmish version, the zombie version. So oh, you can do it. You can do a zombie version with a uh, gothic horror, tales of horror uh, supplement. There you go. The machine I think we room. talked about last night, didn't we? Well, that was no. a different game oh. system altogether. I'll be right well, back. To show you that I'm paying attention. All right, so yeah, I wasn't really last night, so, so you know. So we're gonna give Matt another trade, everybody, since he got well connected. So let's roll that dice again. I hope he gets ugly. He no gets word. eighty-five. Hold on, everybody. Eighty-five is. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. That's everybody. Not good. Everybody, Matt is bald. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckily, he has a sun helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I rolled his extra trait, and he got bald. Yeah. Nice. Bald. It's okay. So what we'll right do with is, it. you know, when the Americans are firing on him, his reflection of his head will cause him to have a minus one to roll. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Mini warmuts. Let's see how that guy's modeled. He's bald. <laughs> Some guy gets off that. his cart and starts placing the minis on the freaking table. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Mini Warmut. His trait roll is. Ooh. Seven. Oh, boy. Not good. Bit of the consumption. His unit may not move at the double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now who wants to be bald? <laughs> oh, shit. Units can't move. I mean, it's just the it's just the commander, so it's just a uh, two submachine guns there. So and at double butt, it will. They they don't have to. Actually, it's the kind of reflex is perfect because the German isn't going to be moving much anyway. So he's just sitting in the house. Minding his own business. All right. So now the bad thing is I don't I don't think a mini warm is gonna be able to he can try. 
communicating. So that's it. We got all the traits. So in the, the scenario is designed, the, the, the Germans pretty much can set up anywhere from here back. So behind the behind the uh, minefields. So, you know, you got a bunker here, trees, the hedgerow here, which I'm, offers some sort of protection. And it, I'm going to call it a line of sight block unless you're up against it. Unless, Chris, you say something different. And then this is a single story, you know, just a wood house. Um, all the little bits and bobs here don't do anything. And I'm going to start the Americans like right up here because this movement, they can't see past. This is a crest line. So America. All right. So Germans. We'll give them any warm up a second to respond. I don't know if he's up and figuring out very that figures going out to consume tacos. <laughs> tacos. Someday, whenever the rope gets off his, oh, I see. That was uh, many warm ups saying that. Oh, man, that. That hurts my feelings. I'm crying mm -hmm. tears. Okay. Real tears. All right. Where do you want to put the machine gun? I think I know. I could just place it there. I'm going to put it yes. in the box. Tell me otherwise. See, he, said, he just automatically just. Said, I'm just. Hey, where do you I, just calm <laughs> down, everyone. Many warm up. You want to put that machine gun in the building? I can do that or anywhere else. No, I'm good. It's good to be. Um, how about uh, how about the mortar? So we got a mortar, a sniper, your commander, and your squad to place on there. The Stug will come in after we have a couple turns. So we can kind of go without the tanks initially. Oh. Or we can put them right on. Whatever you guys want to do. I say put them where you think I would put them. Don't building. Crap. All right. So you want to put the machine gun in the building? That's what we said. Okay. All right. This is a Ceresa Precision building. I think it's really awesome. Ceresa. So, Chris, do you guys worry about like windows and all that stuff in buildings? Or you just kind of. Not really. Okay. Good. Cool. I mean, if, if there's an opening on that side of the window or of that side of the building, you can shoot out of it. Yeah. So basically, there's, I mean, I could turn it so that there's more openings this other direction because there's only one window over this side. And then these ends have like windows and doors. Yeah. But if we're not going to no work. Out. He says he needs a table to eat tacos. <laughs> Here's your table. So where do you want the mortar, Mini Wormut? Your commander, your sniper. And your um, our, uh, infantry squad. Remember, the Americans are trying to take this house and this corner here, basically. And I don't know what it takes to take an objective in this game yet, but we'll figure it out. Chris will tell us, right, Chris? You're our great leader. Yeah, you're good. Be, care be careful where you're slinging them words around, man. A great leader. And then more Matt, we'll give you a second. And so, Matt. I didn't do it. It was hippie. All right, Matt, where do you want to put the the mortar? Chris, I guess tell us how mortars work as far as like who, how do they fire indirect? And do they have so to um, indirect fire, which can be found on page ten, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> uh, page eleven. Uh, weapons listed with indirect fire capability can mm -hmm. target units they can't see or draw a line of sight to, as long as a friendly unit can see the target. Okay. Place a market on the battlefield in sight of a friendly unit and within range, this is your target point. Okay. Uh, unlike direct fire, which uses multiple dice to hit, you'll only use one die to indirect fire to roll to hit. Uh, roll to hit with the target as usual. If a success roll, uh, if a success roll a D10 uh, close to the target point, the die shows the distance in inches the round deviates with the point of the die showing the direction. Use the corresponding template centered on the impact zone. Any unit partially under the template is hit with the number of dice shown in the weapon profile, but only miniatures under the template can be removed as casualties. For example, if the template only covers two members of a unit, but the wound results in three wounds, only two under the template are removed. Shock still applies uh, to the unit. Okay. If the roll was a miss, use the procedure above, but double the distance rolled. If the same target point is targeted a second consecutive time and the roll is a success, 
the round is on target and there is no deviation. They have zeroed in. If the roll is a miss, deviate the distance rolled as above. Cool. Put that, put that mortar behind the building. So we're talking about this mortar here. So yes, the Germans, I agree. That's good, Matt. So the mortar, German mortar will go behind the building. And then Matt, your your mortar, you where do you want that? You want it in the woods here? So this is uh, a cross line. No one can see beyond it. So you're yeah, really gonna... safe. You're safe anywhere back there, really? Put it in the woods. Yeah. Put it in the orchard back here. Right? The orchard. And he'll be all safe eating his apples while they're shooting mortars. Okay. So many warm up said, go ahead, Todd, place the figures wherever you want. But so Matt put, I like Matt's idea of the mortar back here. Where do we want to put the sniper, everybody? And this this uh, bunker here has a view like all the way here. They, these Americans have to cross this field with this bunker right here. I probably would have put the machine gun in there myself, but many warm up put it there. So in the building, so we're going to go with that. Get sniper in the bunker. Okay. Yeah. I'll put them on top just so we all remember it's there and you guys can't see it anyway. It's so small. So how about the infantry unit? Chris, do they have to have some sort of cohesion or? No. That's so why you have we... leaders. Okay. So we got the leader here with on the, on the round base. So what do you guys think? Maybe put a infantry unit in the corner of the hedge because that's something they have to hold. Looks like a good spot. I've got these, they're not based singly, they're based in, you know, two per stand, so that will probably be bad for like when artillery lands, but oh well. Should I put some, uh, some of the guys in the building? Yeah, sure, why not? I like the bocage. Bocage. All right, we'll, we'll put another one there. We'll put the lead, so we'll put the leader in the building, one of the two guys in the building, and four of the guys guarding the hedge. And more to warm up. Any more months asking where his mortar is? Behind this building here. And his leader and stuff, we're going to say there's a hole in the building they can see. Oh, the overall commander. Um, any thoughts? Building. Bocage. Okay. Do that. I'll do like Todd does and just place it. All right, Matt, you're up. Got your mortar back here for the Americans. Oh, he said bunker. Oh, for which one? Here. Who do you want in the bunker? The overall leader, you think, is what he's talking oh, about. Oh, overall leader in the bunker. Okay. Cool. This is why it's cool. To, hmm. Or he says we're off the table. <laughs> wow. All right. So, Matt, I'm going to start you up like here so we can get a little movement without being seen. Where do you want yeah. your engineer to come in here? Way over here on the left? You want them to come straight down this road so they're out in the wide open? Or do you want them to take care of these? Um, uh, to the right. You're right. Okay. In the wood? Uh, in the yeah. wood? A little bit of cover, yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay. How about your overall leader? Your, you. Where do you want to put you? Back there with the mortar. Ooh. You want to eat apples, too? Good. Good to stay healthy. He's hungry. All right. How about uh, Squad One, who is led by Bane, Lily Livered. He will avoid charge range. Oh, good. Put him over there to on the left side. You gotta okay. storm the bus. So here's a question. You want him to come up this way, kind of avoid the minefield, straight to the front of the bunker? Or do you want to come to the side and to the back of the bunker, but go through the minefield? Uh, we'll risk the minefield. Risk the minefield, okay. And back here. I don't know how minefields work, but we'll figure that out. Chris will let us know. And then unit number two, squad two led by ID Jester, who is truly ugly. I'm sorry, ID. It's just the way the dice roll. <laughs> Hope he's still on, though. No. Um, There's an excuse. Where do you want to put him, at? In the woods over here on the right? Right here at the... Press line. Uh, we'll put them on the right. We'll split them up. In the trees or in, in the open behind the crest line? Behind the crest line. All right. Oh, boy. You're behind the crest line. I think we're about ready to roll dice. Ah. Oh, except for someone has to go. Um, 
the latrine, as it were. Oh yeah, who's that? Oh, oh who's that? <laughs> now I'm gonna do this so everyone can see everyone. Give me a coke. There you go, everyone. Keep the keep everyone entertained. Check the comments. Chitty chat. I'll be right back. Ah, God, these threats. These threats. <laughs> oh. Don't step on the dog. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. Todd gave us the show. All right. And welcome back to Rocky's War Room. All right. All right. If you'd mind. So. Yeah. Dooby dooby doo. I'm more here to paint. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I wanted to get these boar mites finished. Look at us doing a great job taking over a show. <laughs> well, I've had something exciting happen today. Uh, did it involve... Uh... A fence falling over in my yard, yes. Yeah, I saw I saw the pictures. Very, very exciting. There was an earthquake today, too. Did you know that? Was there? Where? North Carolina. Really? Yeah, apparently, it was felt in Georgia. It was a 5.1. Wow. Yeah. That's a big earthquake. I didn't know about that. I haven't even turned on the news yet today. So. I only know because I have friends in Georgia. Well, I, I I've gotten a rare thing happen today where I've been working on the basement so much. My wife uh, this morning says, I want you to go downstairs. I want you to hang out in your new room and I don't want you to come out. I said, okay. No uh -oh, that sounds, that sounds dangerous. What's she doing? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. She's shopping and stuff right now, but she's shopping. She says she, you know, she wants me to have a, get a break. So. Oh, that's nice. You definitely deserve a break. Yeah. I was just telling Nache a little bit ago, it's uh, 40 days straight of doing nothing but working on my basement. And I'm happy to report that it rained its butt off last night. No water was inside the house, but the fence blew over. <laughs> I mean, literally, one panel was 50 feet away from where it started. I mean, it was your neighbor's fence there, right? Yep. It wasn't your. It wasn't your problem. We just gotta get them to remove no, it. But you still gotta make a claim on the insurance. You know, you gotta call them and say, "Hey, this happened because I don't want." You know, I mean, I had a, my uh, shed's got a hole in it. One of the panels busted right through my shed, and oh, uh, that sucks. And uh, my barbecue pit was smashed to bits. So, not the barbecue pit. Yeah, man, my my cool little Weber barbecue pit. I think cool might be a little hyperbolic, but you know, that's fine. You know, I've had those big propane barbecue pits and the fancy ones with and, and everything. And I, I keep using my charcoal, you know, $20 <laughs> Walmart Weber grill, man. So that's all good. Ours, ours actually blew up on us. What? Yeah. We had a propane grill. We lit it for the first time and it blew up. Blow up. Blew up. One of the burners oh. lately caught fire. Blew up. You're acting like it became a rocket ship. It might as well have been. <laughs> oh, I love you, Mississippi. <laughs> hey, she's mine. <laughs> Get your own. I do. I do have my <laughs> Except my gaming room is now got a door behind it, so therefore I don't have the uh, comments in the background. I'm sure there will be several if uh, she were here. So, the, I mean, let's face it. You don't have you don't have to worry about. The What's that? What happened to him? Oh, he froze. He did. did I, huh? Who froze? There you are. Who? Who am? Who am I? You said put it the put it this way, and then you just froze. Oh yeah, I said uh, you have snappy kids to worry about. Yeah, that's true. Guess who doesn't have stoppy kids to worry about? <laughs> hey, dude. You got cats and dogs, don't you? 
I mean, I, I, yeah, that's true. Our cats do break a lot of stuff. So, I mean, there's, there's that. But I don't have cats. Hi, everybody. I'm All back. Right. Chris is back. I'm back. Maybe Warmup says, um, is there any tank in this game? Oh, you know what? This is so funny. I was having. I was having Mini Wormut place the Germans, and he's the American commander. And I was having Matt place the Americans, and he's the German commander. That is funny. I am um, on my A game, but we're good. It's, it's yes, there are tanks. Mini Wormat. Mini Wormat. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's Sherman 75. You that's have that because you're the U.S. commander, and Matt gets a stool. Stool. Look, the bottom's even painted. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. on the Sherman. Definitely Listen. a side joke right there. All right. So but the tanks are going to come on in the uh, second turn or whatever. Or whatever. Or whatever. All or right. Whatever the Overlord decides to put them in. Yeah. We'll let the Overlord decide. Okay. Because he's got to go here uh, sometime soon. So. All right. Well, that's all cool. Well, Chris, how do you know who to move in this game? <laughs> so, funny <clears throat> you should have. Um, <laughs> Sorry. You have uh, you've got card activation. So each player will receive one card dealt to him in a hand for each unit he has to activate. Okay. So, um, you'll have one for the overall leader. One for each special weapons team. One for the squad and the mortar. And this sniper, squad, mortar, commander, and machine gun. So they both have five. Okay. So then every you go by value starting with the highest number. Being a okay. king. Nice shuffling job there, bro. Is king really a number? Yes. Okay. With that attitude, it is. Uh, that makes no sense. <laughs> I got to shuffle these up. That was something happened there. I shuffled these last night, but those are all like the all same numbers. <laughs> so you go highest card to highest value card to lowest value card. King, queen, etc., and you go if if uh, two cards, or if uh, both players have uh, the same card value. Let's say both have kings. You then go in suit order. Suit order is spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. Oh, I was gonna say like pants, sport jacket. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've uh, re shuffled the cards again. Here's the American hand, just so it doesn't really matter at this point. There's no, secret, no secrets here. So the Americans have... So the Americans are going to go first because they've got king of spades. Oh, good job, Mini Wormut. Good job. No fair. I'm bald. He's got consumption. Right? That is true. Crap. Billing may not be good. You know, I might have done that completely wrong, though. Because, you know, I was getting everyone mixed up here. Let me see who's really got consumption. No? Yeah, it's Mini Warmat. Okay. I mean, Mini Warmat. Right. Yeah, get his name right. And here is the Okay, drum. now. Now that Germany. ace. That ace can be whatever card you want it to be. If you wanted to make it a king of spades, you can make it a king of spades. However, the king of spades, the real king of spades will go first. Okay. All right. Well, we know Mini Warmut's going to go first, and Mini Warmut, if you if you don't respond quick, we'll let you know Chris or Hippie or somebody command for you to uh, go to destroy Matt. All right. Mm -hmm. King of Spades. Then we just put this in the discard pile. Yep. Okay. All right, Mini Warmut. What do you want to do? Oh, I was going to do. Oh, before we do anything, we're going to have some preliminary bombardment. That's a part of the scenario design. Why? Not fair. So how does that work? But Mini Warmut always gets to preliminary bombard me. Oh my gosh. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> I didn't just mention. Okay. 
Where are, oh, I do not see artillery on here. <laughs> Hippies right away with that. <laughs> I want to know about what you guys do together. Uh, trying, to find, trying to find it. Everyone hold on. Peacekeeping forces. That's cool. By, so everyone knows they have scenarios in here. There's like four or five scenarios. Cool. Like Chris was saying, there's sample units and vehicles. There's a vent. Right. So a bombardment is um, you use the rules for airstrike above, uh, which is the same as indirect fire, basically. Uh, okay. And you get three three-inch templates. Holy crap. Well, goodbye, Baldy. All right. Well, if he survives, I'm going to call him. We just pretty much place him wherever he wants. So, how it works is you'll place, um, Fire. can place the five inch, or in this case, three inch blast template over any spot or units on the battlefield. Once it is placed, roll a d10. The direction uh, the, uh, the die is pointing is where the template scatters, and for the number of the, di of the dice is the distance. Oh, yikes. That doesn't sound good. It's over here on the road. Okay. Nothing happens. Right? So next, correct. So maybe warm up. I'm making the call for you uh, because that's how I play. But I'm just I figure you'll uh, want to hit the guys. Hope I need to get that off the screen. Oh, we got Al Red Sox fan on here, everybody. He's a good sports channel. I call him War Gamer Curious. Um, <laughs> these aren't even your mortars, mini warm up. This is your artillery you're getting beforehand. Is doing nothing, so we'll place it over these guys here. Here goes one. Okay, but that's eight inches, but that goes towards some other troops. So let's see if it. Um, let's kind of land there. All right, so it's only covering the mortar team. Okay. Okay. Now what? So, what you will do is roll a wound chart for each template. Uh, you will roll, you just roll the wound chart. Um, so the wound chart you can find all the way in the back in the quick reference page. You'll roll a single D10 for each model that is partially under that template. The whole, so there's two guys manning that mortar, so it's going to be two. So roll for the guy on the left. Oh. Two wounds. Two wounds. What did you What did you roll? A nine. A nine. Yeah. So you're going to remove two miniatures from the unit. So actually, it's <clears throat> you're not going to roll for each model. That's that's normal fistful of lead. So that unit is going to lose two miniatures. Hey, Matt. What, the what the hell? Hey, Matt, your mortar that had two guys just lost two guys. Oh, that's nice. Welcome to um, Bigger Battles. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the jungle. That's it. I rage quit. Throw the, all those miniatures all over the place. Okay, hold on. Let me lift the table here. Hold on. Throw the dice. <laughs> I just bought some that. Okay. Final artillery piece over the building here where everyone's occupied. That doesn't look like a three-inch template to me. No, no, no. It's the inside one. Oh, okay. You're an inside one. Oh, you You're see. an inside job. Right, oh come on! Mini warm up. You're you're you need to work on your deviation here. Eight inches over here. It's blasting the uh, railroad. Mini warm up did ask about the railroad scale. I don't know what the railroad scale is for uh, 15 millimeter. Is it N? I don't know what it is. No, uh, N is one one sixtieth. HO is one roughly one sixty fourth. Uh, those are HO scale rails though. Unless there are those the rails from uh, Your battlefront. Battlefront. Uh, those are, I believe, S. Oh, of course. Gauge S, S scale. Okay. Your S scale. S is in Sierra, not F is in Foxtrot. You Foxtrot. <laughs> You're Foxtrot. Okay. All right. So that was the preliminary bombardment. Now, many. <laughs> I think he's happy that we're on this channel. Yeah. I mean, you said you wanted the um, for your first activation. You want the mortar to rain again. That was just the preliminary artillery, buddy. Remember? 
Yeah, go ahead. Maybe we'll give you artillery later, Matt, if you're nice. J just, just imagine if it was Russians. Yeah. What's that going to do for me? They would have carpet bombed you. <laughs> okay. So many warm up. <clears throat> is, is visibility unlimited distance, Matt or uh, Chris? Yeah. Now the the they can either self uh, aim or if any or. other friendly unit can spot somebody that they can't, they can fire on them. All right. Well, this mortar can't see anybody. So this unit here, so many warm up. You want to hit the sniper and the commander in the bunker? You want to hit the partial, you know, four guy, um, five guys over here that are part of the squad behind the hedge? Or you want to hit the. Yeah, uh, hit the conscience. You want to hit the machine gun and uh, two guys in here. So there's four guys in the building. Give them a second to answer. It's a mortar. I think that's a five inch template, isn't it? Yeah. Last five. Um, mortar. Mortar. Motor. It's, it's got blast. Mortar is, yes, blast five. Ooh, baby. So here's, it's going to cover. I would say you could fire at this building and hit the mortar, but there's no one to hit at the mortar anymore, so it doesn't matter. Roadside. Roadside. Right there. I'm here? Okay. Yep. Okay, so you have to roll to hit first. What is yeah. the range? from the mortar is it more than 24 inches Ooh, baby it is uh 25 okay so it is long range okay so it is going to be uh base eight okay and then i'm going to see if there's any additional modifiers uh, we're going to, well, they don't get cover because it's plunging fire. Okay. Um, plunging fire. Size of the target is normal. Eight There's no shock. Um, it's not aimed. It's not maneuvered. Um, is this a gun crew? It's crewed. Yep. No, 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 no. The target. Oh no, the target is just uh, part elements of that squad. So it's five guys. Just Okay. Burgers and fries. Um Although there's a, there is a commander in there, but he's not alone. He's with the group. So Okay, let me get back up to here. So you're going to roll a single die. Okay. Needing an 8 or better. Sorry, Mini Wormut. I apologize in advance for my die rolling. Four. Okay. Roll that D10 again. Nine. You're going to go 18 inches in the direction the die is pointing. Why can't I roll that nine to hit? 18 inches? Yep, because it is a miss. Oh, jeez, dude. Almost lined it back on himself. It didn't hit anybody, but so it's like right here. Boink. Okay. That's awesome. So he has activated. Normally what I have is I've got some sort of way of marking that they've been activated. I've got little activation markers that I've printed. Okay. Um, I think but in this case, you know. We'll remember. We can remember. All right. So all kings have been played. Are there any queens? <laughs> hey now no no there are no queens come on everybody stay focused any, any jacks <laughs> um, <laughs> a few of those. come on move on people focus There's a few of those tins we have no, a jack s uh, chris the germans have two jacks in that ace okay so <laughs> the, the the two jacks get thrown down oh really you put them both down yeah all cards, all cards of a single uh, value get thrown out at the same time. Wow. Okay. Okay. So for the Jack of Spades, uh, Jack of Spades is also a special. Yep. I wrote it on the card here. Unit or commander gets plus one to shooting. Right. So what you want to do, uh, this is mini warm-up, right? You know, this is Matt. Matt. So Matt, what you want to do is 
activate a unit that is going to shoot, if possible. The reason. Do I have my, uh, do I have my mortar team still? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, how about we activate the snipe? Oh, wait, um, I, I'm not the side with the sniper. No, not anymore. Yeah, you okay. are, Matt. I, that, I got it all confused. You had the sniper, Matt, in this bunker with your commander, and they can see this unit behind the cover of the crest line. Well, let's have Hippie shoot at him. Give okay. A, so what a, you're going to do is uh, uh, what's range from the sniper to the team, middle of the team. Okay, so that's how you do. You don't, you, okay, middle of the team. Perfect. 18 and a half, so 19 inches. Okay, and going to page 10. A, uh, um, do we have a sniper rifle on here? Or is it just... I'm wishing there was one. But... Modern rifle. We're going to give it a modern rifle. I would say that... Because, does he have the sniper ability? He has dead eye. Is there a sniper ability? There is a sniper ability also. Let's give him that. Um, That's what I'm looking for, so let's do that. Uh, hold on. Well, at least there was in uh, original. Let me, yep, let me sniper. Once per game, crew may re-roll a shoot roll. Once per game? I know. That's, um, a unit hero commander may re-roll missed shoot dice limit to one unit. Okay, let's see what the other options. Once per game, crew may reroll. No, not what I look for. Huh. Plus we gave him dead eye. Okay, dead eye. Let's look up dead eye real quick. Oh, hey, we can also do eagle eye, which increases the short range by two and long range by four. It just seems like the sniper should be more. Yeah. Um, so. Or killers. Let's, hey, Matt, I'm going to give you a choice here. What? You, your sniper can be eagle-eyed, which increases his weapon short range by two inches and long range by four, or you can make him a killer, which adds one to the wound damage roll when shooting. Make him a killer. Ooh. Okay, so I would give him dead eye and killer. Okay, he's got that. Killer. You like uh... So you, your dead eye gets a, an additional plus one. And then you once per game, you can re-roll a shoot roll. Yeah. Give you a plus one. So <laughs> you are looking at a modern rifle. Yep. Which is 12 to 24 inches. And you said it was 18? Yep. Okay. So that uh, the eagle eye still doesn't help. So you're at a base eight. Yep. You have eagle eye or dead eye, which is... Uh, a plus one to your roll, so that brings it to a seven. Yep. Plus you're rolling, you're uh, activating on a jack of spades, which is a plus one. Ooh. Which brings sick. you to a base, or you're now at a six or better to hit. And they are in light cover, though, so back up to seven. So you're, so you're back up to seven, yes. Okay. I, I get this. Don't worry. How about... um? This action thing with aimed fire, what's that about? We use them just more so often. what you can do is you can aim. aim since fire? it gets two actions, you can aim, then fire. So that aim negates the cover, so you're back down to a, a six. Yeah. So six are better to hit. So our, our, we didn't really talk about what happens when a card goes down, that units get two things they can do. Yes, two activations. So can that could that have mortar fired twice, or is that not happen for mortars? Uh I guess you could have uh, could have fired twice, but it, you would want to. You're probably going to have to uh, uh, do it in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it this time. So, um, Matt, do you want to aim your fire and increase your you know go down to a six to hit, or do you want to fire twice at seven? Oh, I want to fire twice, bro. Okay. Of course he does. He's a vicious, vicious man. So first shot at a seven. Five. Miss. Second shot with a seven. Ten. ten. Well, what is zero? Is it ten or ten. zero? Yeah, it's a ten. So you've hit. Pew. You now roll to wound. Do it. 
Let's wound him. And he gets a plus one so, to roll. Yeah, because he's a killer. Five. So <clears throat> an eight or um, a, a five or better will remove one uh, man from the unit. An eight or better removes two. Oh, hold on. I think I'm seeing a different uh, uh, QRS than you. It, says, it looks like it says... Because he, because he's a plus one. Oh, I rolled a four. Two. I'm sorry. I rolled a four. So, of you rolled a four, which makes it a five. So you are, um, they receive shock. Okay, I'm going to use the bolt action. Thanks for that. You just put a one on there. So, all right. All right. Now, what that Thanks. shock does is when that unit activates, they're minus one on movement. They're minus one on. Uh, brains shooting, they're minus one in close combat. Um, shock is bad juju. Okay, Matt, do you want to fire your um MG42 at the guys? Yes. So they can see. Oh, well, actually, the MG42 can no, you can't see them. Only one you can see the ones that the sniper just shot at. Yeah, that's so that's fire good. squad at them. I so want to fire it, keeps keep suppressing that one unit. Okay. Okay. MG42 is going to be considered a machine gun. Yep. It is? Yes. Oh, okay. It's not a heavy machine gun. A heavy machine gun is going to be your 50 cal. Oh, okay. I did mark it as an HMG, but that's not correct. Okay. Well, the only way it would be considered an HMG is if it was tripod mounted. It is. Oh, it's a stationary yep. unit? Mm -hmm. Okay, then it's a heavy machine gun. So they're going to be AP1, uh, which really makes no difference at this point because you're not shooting at anything with armor. Uh, is it less than 18 inches? It's 14 inches. Okay, so you're at a base five to hit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, warm up. But you don't have... Um, they're in light cover, so it's now a six... Um, bu -bu 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 you're not low on ammo. That's not a gun crew. It's not, uh, not a close order unit. Um, but you're going to probably do aimed fire, correct? I don't know, Matt. Do you want to fire twice or you want to aim the fire? We're going to aim it this time. Okay. So you're now at a five. Okay, because your base five, you're up one to a six because of light cover. You're down one to five because you're aiming. Let's see if he has any special traits here real quick. No, he, um, he burst has... fire. Uh, you really don't want to use burst fire in this situation because there's only one unit there, Mini Warmut. Here we go. Matt, let's Matt, Matt, do you have a D10 you want to roll? Or you want to roll? Uh, I'm Peyton, dude. Okay. All right, dude. Here I go. <laughs> oh, how funny. Four. Oh, come on. It's bullcrap. Stupid game. Yeah, that's okay. I probably would have rolled the same. All right. Um, so now we're back to another card. Remember, Matt, remember, he has that ace of spades. Um, just to remind everybody. So we go all the way down. The next highest card is a nine. Yep. So, um, many warm up there's, uh, in, in bigger battles, uh, you don't have ammo hog, uh, on, uh, machine guns. That's only on, uh, normal fistful of lead. But there is low ammo if you roll a one, more ones than. Yes. I mean, you do have ammo hog on the laser rifles. But not on the machine guns because they're crew served weapons. You're a crew served weapon. Damn straight. So, did you say Matt can use this ace at any time? Like, if we, yeah. So, if you say tens, he can say, "Yeah, I got a ten. Yeah, he could easy, even use it as a uh, jack of spades to shoot at uh, with that bonus. Okay. Um, so, Matt, remember you have that ace. So, we're gonna just count down tens. And down to nine. So, um, 
Mini Warmoth has a nine. I have a nine. Oh, you do? I'll have a yeah. beer. I'll have a beer. Can it be any suit, or does that have to be the suit that the ace is? Nope. Whatever you want. Literally, it becomes whatever card you want. Literally. All right. So, Mini Warmoth, you're... Literally. literally. And uh, so, think about what you want to do. You got your engineer here, Mini Warmoth, a squad here, a squad here, um, but your mortar's fired. So, too bad. All right. But Matt's going to go first with his ace of spades. So, I assume... Mm -hmm. What do you want to do there, Matt? You want to shoot your, shoot your squad? Yeah, why not? Okay. Let's shoot my own squad. So that the same unit that you're trying to suppress. Yep. In this case, you got one, two, three, four, five, six with rifles and one with a submachine gun. The submachine gun I don't think it's going to reach. Nope. You can't reach it. Can't reach it. Um, just, ooh, just out of range. Oh, actually, he's pretty far. So these guys are kind of spread out. Um, Chris, so how do we do the range on that? Just by each guy or... Uh, again, center, basically I would go center of unit, center of unit. All right. So about here then. Um, so 16 inches. And what are you firing? Rifles. So they're going to be long range. Okay. Certain eights. Light cover. Except so nine. Nine. Uh, many more. Oh no, Matt, do you want to aim fire or fire twice? Well, aim fire. Aim fire. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So oh, you're also um, okay. So who who's shooting who now? This is German infantry unit. Pay attention. Led by uh, Chris A. Um, yeah. Pay attention from hippie. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Man, hello, went, hello, went, Pot. Went. Have you met the kettle? <laughs> oh, you're putting you're putting some tea on. So it's an eight to hit, one oh, down. Okay, so point to the unit that is firing. Okay, at, okay. So you're at an eight, minus one, you're needing a nine or better. Mm -hmm. And you're rolling for each weapon. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, let me get more D10s out. I'll just roll per, I have two right now, so we don't have to wait around. Um, but he also said he wanted to do aim fire. So, mm -hmm. okay. so you're back down to eight. All right. So for those two, one eight. So okay. And those two, a nine. So it does two hits and two more. Three. So you got three hits. That's not mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what you'll do is you'll roll um, on the wound chart. And we don't have any modifiers, I don't think. What is this quote? Oh, no. No, yeah, there's no modifier. Nope. So a, a 10 and a 9. Okay. Yeah. So that's an 8. So you're going to lose uh, two miniatures from the unit. Yeah. A 10 and a 2. So there's another shock added. Yep. So you're at two shock now. you got to roll another die. The third. Oh. Cock die. Ooh, cock die again. Five. So another shock. Five is another shock. So you're at three shock. Three shock and a stand is gone. We're going to take your take that guy away. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, I, mean, I don't. This this is not going. This is not going well for the Americans. I rolled up that newspaper and smacked that mud on the nose. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> All right, many warm ups. <laughs> Engineer here, a squad that's got uh, two down, two guys, and three wounds or three uh, shock, and these guys over here that no one can see right now. So, what would you like to do with this nine of diamonds? Diamonds. I have a nine. Oh, hey, it's gun barrel, everybody. Everybody, gun barrel. Another good channel. You still have gun barrel. Gun barrel. I would say he's a good channel, but I'd say he's my nemesis. So. It's okay, I guess. He's an okay painter, I guess. Oh, oh. Wow. Oh. You can feel the tension. Yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Doggone it. He owes me $2, though. Okay. $2 <laughs> now. I want my $2. Or maybe I owe him $2. I don't know. He, he's Canadian. It's worth about 
two dollars. It's about a dollar. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Mini Warmut. Canadian two dollars is like what? Thirty-seven cents. Easy. No, a nine of diamonds is not a wild. It's just a card to activate. So engineer, squad with three shock or squad. So what what do you do about shocks and stuff? Uh, it's worth. Uh, I'm sorry, not Jay. It's worth free health care. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, as okay to one of the actions you can take. Um, a unit hero or, or commander can try to remove shock markers. This is the rally action. To rally a unit, a hero or commander must roll a number of dice equal to the number of shock markers, removing one for every roll that scores equal to or higher uh, as below. So if you want to attempt uh, that, you would roll three dice yep and then on a five plus you would remove a shock for each five or better you roll uh, if all shock markers are removed on this roll the unit may either make one more or one move or one shoot action if all the shock markers aren't removed the unit's activation is over does, uh, does Rally take up all your um, actions? Unless you remove all the shock. Okay. Because most, most of the time you can do two things, but you're saying with the Rally. Right. Only because okay. the, you're literally focused. The, the leader of that unit is literally focusing on getting them to get their shit together. So a be best way to think of this is in Band of Brothers, when they're going into Carantan, and Winters is literally kicking them in the ass to get them motivated to get going as they're under fire of, the, of that MG-42. Uh, His sole concern at that point is getting them to move. Now, if he gets everybody to move, then they can, uh, by getting rid of uh, all the shock, they can then do one more activation of either a move or a shoot. Can I, uh, can I motivate them? Or can I... Uh... Can I shock them? You could. No. You've already done something. Hippie. You're out. You're out for the turn. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Me, so Roma, this is Sparta Rally. Yes, absolutely. Okay. What, well, I guess I am interested. He did ask this question before, Chris. What does shock do for the unit? What's it it's, a minus, it's a minus one to everything. It's okay. a minus one to hit. It's a minus one inch to movement. It's... Um, it's not a minus one to wounding, but, um, it's, it's, it's a minus one to everything. I can oh. shock you, Chris. Actually, it's remove a die for each shock marker. Jeez. Stuff costs more than it used to. What? Wow. <laughs> Pretty brutal. All right. So rally. <laughs> three, three dice. Pull out some more D10s, boys and girls. And so we're rolling. He wants to get a five or higher. There's no special trade, I don't think, on so, this one. So, yeah, you've got, you're have got you rolling three dice, right? I am rolling three dice. This is squad nice. two, so let me make sure there's no special. I'm like really doing that. ID gesture. ID gesture. The truly ugly ID gesture is going to rally him. Five plus. Boys. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, one, one, and two. That would be a distinct no. They're done. Um, sorry, Mini Warmut. Yeah, this scenario is going to have to be designed differently, I think, for this game. <laughs> um, all right, next Too up. Too bad, so seven. sad. No, I'm sorry, eight, nine, seven. We have uh, Germans have seven spades, and Americans have seven of hearts, so that means spades Germans go first. Germans go first. This is also a special, may re-roll re die, um, one die, or a whole throw. Yep. So what do I got left? Wow, he did well. You know, you have your commander left, and your mortar. Oh shoot, there's no mortar. Oh hey now. So this commander, what can this commander do, Chris? I have no uh, idea. Got in the bunker with the sniper. Can All I make this? Got some stuff. Can I? Uh, All right, let me see here. Fire the sniper again. He's got a submachine gun. That's mad. He's sitting in the bunker with a submachine gun. With his bald head, well connected. 
If he's well Same. connected, he should get some more infantry. I agree. Uh, bu- 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 well, you could rally, but there's nothing to rally. <clears throat> what about Raleigh? Uh, I'm gonna stand there and look pretty. With your with your gleaming bald head. Form mm-hmm. up. Can I reflect the sun in the enemy's face? <laughs> 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 Increase oh, my man. cover bonus that way, you know. Yeah, I don't think there's much you can do, Chris. Just sit there, unless you want yeah. to move. Matt, do you want to move? <clears> yeah, you can move. You want to move your commander from the bunker? No, I'm gonna keep him locked up with Hippie. So that's it. Oh, look at Matt and Hippie. Um, here, here oh, is here out. is something that is different between big, uh, bigger battles and original Fistful of Lead. A unit, hero, or commander can only fire once per turn. Mm. I forgot that. My apologies. No, we haven't hadn't come up yet, so. Okay. Well, mini warm up. <laughs> Wanna move this squad or your engineer? The engineer has a flamethrower if you want to get him up to the building eventually. Yep, you can go through this minefield here, or you can go screw that and go around it. The minefield. The nine field. Many warm ups said nerd raging over here. Squad. <laughs> All right. Because you move the squad. So pretty much they're not going to be able to see anything. So like we just want to, I think if I just want to move them up. So the movement is five. Can they move twice? Yes. So basically that's going to put them right at the edge. So the woods don't do anything to their movement, right? It's not extra rough. Just depending on you. Can't wait uh, to see what happens in the minefield. So, are there? Um, let's move that tree over there. Are there opportunity fire? I mean, everyone's already done something on his side, but is there such thing as opportunity fire in this? No. Okay. Not- <clears throat> Sometimes that bugs people, but. I mean, you can, you as an action, you can set somebody to ready. Oh, oh, yeah. And that is a token that they. Yeah. Uh, this is like uh, Overwatch or hold action. Uh, the first part of the action, the unit hero or commander receives a ready marker. Later in the turn, the. Uh, later in the turn, the unit hero or commander can react to enemies by interrupting to fire or move. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear my clip or something? Okay. Uh, six of um, the next card down is six, so that's um, mini mini war mat, mini war mat. Um, <laughs> Stop it. So he's got you've got your engineer and your commander. So unless you want to move your commander up, or you or do you want to move, go ahead and move the engineer? And that engineer, I don't know, pre measuring allowed, but because you guys can't really see, it's five inches to the edge of the uh, minefield. Mine. So, Start moving across that minefield, or you could move up to it and stop, or you can move mm-hmm. around it. Um, this is an engineer unit, so th- I don't know. Engineer just said flamethrower, so I guess they don't have rifles as well. That's, hmm. Yeah, that's just a lone engineer guy. He's a small unit. You're a small unit. I knew that was coming. Oh, mini warm up. You want to move the. Um, I'm being ignored now, anyway. I'm through to the bunker, I'm assuming. So I'm going to move him 10 inches over here out of cover, out of sight. So, mm-hmm. okay. The next, the next card up. So, Chris, what I've got. So, the next card is a four of diamonds. It's the German card, but it's it kind of represents the mortar because that's the only thing that hasn't moved. Do I just discard that now? Yes. And so he'll only get four cards the next turn? That oh. is correct. It's Booker. And then now, um, Mini Warmut, your commander can do something uh, to a spades. The special ability on twos is reroll misses from one throw. But he's back here. Do you want to move your commander, Mini Warmut, or do you want to keep him back there, back in the orchard eating apples with your mortar team? Well, I set him up pretty good for myself. <laughs> yeah, he did. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, do we see what many warmed said here? Holy cow, look out, Matt. No way, Jose. Go around. We're gonna torch that baldy. <laughs> wow. Jeez. You are no longer coming on the Rockies War Room. You can forget that. <laughs> such, such hate and vitriol. Right? In Jeez. miniature form. So many warm up. You want to do anything with your commander or you just want to leave commander alone? Okay, beautiful. All right. So Chris, we you we everyone's gone through all their cards. Okay. So you pick up the cards, you shuffle. Your redeal for all units that are going to be receiving activation. You put the discarded cards back in the pile? Yep, you do. Leave Commander alone, he says. <laughs> Where am I? He's enjoying his apples or his wine. Okay, so <clears throat> situation, the Americans are hurting. Well, I guess the Germans are hurting too. They lost a unit. <laughs> he lost his mortar, so that's a pretty big deal. All right, the Americans are getting a tank this turn. So think about where you're going to want to bring them in there, mini warm up along all this the trees won't affect them but the minefields would all right just 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 kind of just kind of so the germans only get four but the americans get six normally in a regular game uh -huh. what i would do is i would deal out four hands or two hands with four cards each face down and allow the player with only four cards to choose which deck they want and then deal out the rest to the other deck. Wow. Okay. Sorry. You don't get that choice, Matt, but that's cool. What? What? He wasn't paying attention. Like yeah. hippie. I've got a crisis on what I'm ordering for dinner. <laughs> what are you ordering? Uh, apparently, we're getting Chinese food. Oh, that's Danny. Get Mongolian beef. Ugh. Orange no. chicken. General Chow. Two egg rolls. Everyone knows General Chow's, General Chow's chicken. General So's. Exactly. Totally chicken. All right. Mini warm up. Oh, wait, are, what are jokers do? Do I need to keep them in or should I take them out? All right, so a joker will, if you have a, if you have an event list, joker triggers an event. Oh. And then another card is pulled. So is that event a joke? Oh, let's do it. Do you have an, a list of events? Somewhere in the book here, yeah. Yeah, let's take a look. Page 37. An event. Sniper loses his shit. <laughs> Fires on commander. <laughs> All right. Bald head blinds. <laughs> Roll the 10. 10. 9. One friendly regular unit enters on your baseline. They will, uh, they will be available at the beginning of the following turn. Wow. What? Wait, Germans or Americans? Americans. Damn it. That's um This is unfair. You're on the baseline, may warm up. Rage quit. <laughs> Man, there's been two. So but he gets another card, Chris, or no? Yes. Ooh, dang, may warm up. So here's may warm up, here are your cards. Queen of Hearts, Jack of Spades, Jack of Hearts, four. Four, two aces. Matt, you got a nine. I'm sorry, a queen of diamonds, a ten, nine, and a two. That's bull crap. <laughs> That's bull hockey. Many warm says you sauerkrauts are going down. 
Oops, sorry, not being PC. Oh, okay. All right. Pieces, pieces are wild, right? Yep, yeah. they can literally be literally. 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 So right now you're going first because you've got uh, Queen of Hearts there, um, Mini Warmut. So you're good for this. But then I guess you could play it as another queen. Let's see. Queen of Hearts, there's nothing. I guess you said you he can beat Queen of Diamonds too, Chris? Yeah. But the other, he, but Matt would go first because he actually has the Queen of Diamonds. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, it's Queen of Hearts. The special ability um, is fire. Uh, ooh, <laughs> this is good. Queen of Hearts, roll a d10. Odd, you get one mem member of your unit back. Two, you get an even, you get two members back. So, uh, I think I know where you want to play that. Mm -hmm. So, th is that like a, just an extra thing that happens, right? That's not one of their actions. Is that right, Chris? Correct. That just happens. So, I'm going to decide for you. Now, the, the, the real big decision is, is which D10 do we use? It's going to get you a nice even roll. Let's see. Which D10 do I have all evens on? Even. Two back. Eight. So, if that... If that die had all evens, wouldn't that make it odd? Dun, 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 dun. Oh my god! <laughs> so, uh, and then one month, your two guys that you thought were uh, dead are back. They just kind of ran away a second. They got injured. They got hit in the butt. So, Advance engineer to building, or let them rain on the building, or let it rain on the building. Well, you, you, your engineer and your mortar team are not currently being activated. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of jumped in there for you, uh, Mini Warmut. Like I am want to do. Yeah, yeah. He plays for you. No, no. I just, you want to get your two guys back, right? Okay. So now you have an action. Now with that, you got two actions. Do? He's, he's got his full actions. That's right. Well, unless he rallies, because you still do have those three pin shocks on you. So Mini Warmut, you want to? If you fire with them, you would get. They're a minus three. On so you have seven on dice to start, but then you take three dice away. So you're going to get four dice. Or you could try to rally that chalk. Things cost more. Remove shock, he says. Here we go. Three D10. You're looking for. Eight, We're in nine, and recession. four. A what, a what, and a what? Eight, nine, and four. So he's got... Three shock. So he's got two. Four. He's got one one shock left, but that's Dang. all he can do now. That's okay. You going to shock him back up? I'm going to shock the crap out of him. Oh, easy. Easy. All right, so mini warm-up. Um, it's Queen of Diamonds is next, and Matt has it. You can certainly use one of your aces to... Activate, but Matt is going to go first regardless. Matt, what do you want to do with your Queen of Diamonds? We're going to snipe the hell out of that unit that just removed its shock. Jeez, so much bitterness. Okay, sniper. You started it. You going to aim fire or shoot twice? You can't shoot twice. Because it's a support unit? No. Um, it can only shoot once. And it's not aimed fire. It's called concentrated fire. Call whatever I want it to be called. Oh, well, you know, you didn't pay for the book, so you can't name it. Okay. Oh, snap. Um, Have that one. Where'd you go? Where'd so you go? Where'd you go? Uh, did, well, so what, uh, what's all this about concentrated fire? Uh, hold on. I got to find the actions again. Here we go. So, concentrative fire. This unit action could be considered a volley fire too, and represents a controlled fire being delivered in an orderly way. Uh, the unit does not move, but gets a plus one to their shoot roll. So it's basically um, aim. Uh, it's basically aimed fire. So um, since you only since you're st standing still, and you can only aim or you can only fire. Might as well make it concentrated fire. And why can he only shoot once? Important. A unit, hero, or commander can only fire once a turn. Last line in the actions section. When does the tank? 
What? <laughs> Bull crap. <laughs> All right. So concentrated fire. So we're starting out. I think we said it was like 18 or something. You're, yeah. So uh, you're at an eight. But you're doing concentrated fire, which makes it seven. A seven. Your uh, dead eye, which makes it a six. But you're in uh, firing into light cover, which makes it a seven. Make you a seven. Okay, seven. Here goes. Hippie lines it up. Can the commander confer any sort of uh, benefits? Uh, go get him. <laughs> okay. Nine. Hang on. I will. I will block their line of sight with a shining sun from my head. What? Nine. Nine. Okay, so you're gonna now roll on the wound roll with a plus yeah. one because he's killer, right? Uh -huh. Two, so three. <laughs> it's it, but it puts more shock on him. Two shots. Yeah. We're in a recession. <laughs> All right, the uh, we go down. Any more queens? No jacks. So now, mini war Matt, you have two jacks, and Matt did not shout out because he doesn't have a jack. Mm -hmm. so they have jack two jacks. jacks. You got your engineer, your squad by the flamethrower, or I'm sorry, your squad by the minefield, engineer with flamethrower, your mortar, oh, and your Sherman sitting on the edge of the table, ready to come in. What the hell? Where's my stoop? Your your jack of spades, which will go first. Unit or commander gets plus one to shooting. So that could help you with this one with the... Well, he can't do anything. He's already done something. And, and the jack of hearts has got the same thing. Unit or commander gets plus one to shooting. So really, they can't fire onto the bunker because it's... They're in the forest, and it's the side of the bunker. I don't know how you play that, Chris. Normally, if you have to see into the front of the bunker, so yeah, it's very bunky. Yeah. Or you can move this tank on. Now, can the tank move and shoot? Yeah, uh, and you've given it uh, the stabilizer, so it doesn't have uh, the negative. So, <laughs> I don't even know. so it gets to move eight inches. Hmm. Can I file a grievance? So we can make it over this um, linear obstacle and be right here and see to the building. I don't know what its range is, but but otherwise it's going to be behind view unless it goes up the road here. But no, but even the road, the road. Uh, there's the hump, the hump in the road, as they say. So if you want to get move and fire now, you just go way over here to the left. Man, that Chinese food place is fast. What is food already there? Yeah. Bring down the house, tank. Well, would you look at that? I have to go right as soon as the tank comes on. Oh, come on. Now, I don't know if your tank's going to reach this many warm up. You really? What's that? You really got to go? Man, I got egg rolls waiting for me right now. All right. No, man, yeah. I got a rain shoot. Don't come between a man and his egg rolls. That's right, especially a fat man. But <clears throat> yeah. like myself. Okay, so so this he's is my one action. Now he wants to fire with the gun. All right, fellas, I gotta run. Hey, Todd, All right, man. Thanks, man. No problem. Thanks, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Not Jay. As usual. Take care. Your rules lowering is great. Uh, Hippie, your banter in the background was perfect. I appreciate it. Of course, it always is. Uh, Todd, the robe by Tinnered Hobbyist. See you later, buddy. See ya. Ta ta. Bye. Bye. See ya. Take care. Ding got day. Okay. You say. All right, so the tank is ready to go. It's moved. It's over here. And he wants to bring down the house over here. So. Let's see what we do here. He, can he fire all the weapons, or does he choose a weapon to fire? He's got you three. choose a weapon to fire. Well, well the, machine gun, the machine guns can fire together. You, you fire a weapon system. Gotcha. Well, he's going to want to fire the HE. 
right? Mini warm up. You said bring down the house. It is. And uh, we'll aim at the MG42. 25 inches. Just under the short range, I believe. And the gun is a 24 to 48. Uh, that's a bummer, dude. So it's going to be long range. Looks like he throws four dice. So it starts at an eight. They're in light cover, a building, because it's just a wood building. Another nine. Uh, target is small. Is a machine gun crew a small target? No. Okay. A sniper would be a small target. Okay. Ah. It's all that weight loss. Um, yeah. So because they've already used a move action, they can't even do aimed fire, right? Correct. And they've maneuvered. So now you're hitting on a 10. But, oh, but they got stabilizer. So, back so they down. ignore that. So nine. Make sure there's no other special things here. Okay, so nine. And I'm going to roll four dice looking to hit on nines. Man, I love the ones. One, one, three, ten. You're you a hit. ten. You hit Mini Warmut. You hit. You hit Mandrake. Okay. So now we do a, a wound roll. And there's no benefit. Ah, dang it. Five. So the MG42 is shocked, though. That's good. Let's take that off. All right. Awesome. Oh, wait. There's more. That jack of spades, he was supposed to get plus one to shooting on that jack, but it, I, I rolled a one, one, three, and ten, so it wouldn't have helped. But Correct. All right, Jack of Hearts, you want to move this engineer or you want to move across the minefield or fire your mortar? Choices. So, again, while you hope maybe you're typing, you got your engineer, your mortar, your commander. And your squad over here that needs to cross the minefield. It looks like it's to head out, Chris. Yeah, I need to head out. Okay, cool. All right. Well, so everybody, what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to keep going. Chris, thank you so much for popping on. It's been a lot sure. like this. No worries. Helping it was fun. Out. I'm going to try to keep playing, and then you can come on later and go like, holy cow, that guy was – Screwing up. Yeah. It's been awesome. Maybe uh maybe we'll get on a private chat and kind of go over some of the other rules or something. But I think it seems pretty straightforward. So it is. So okay. all right. Take awesome. care, guys. Thanks. Uh, bye bye. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, man. All right, Mini Warm Up. You, me, and Hippie right now. I think. Oh yeah, you say thanks, Jay. Advanced flame. Okay, so advance the advance the flamer. Hippie, I'm just gonna ask you for uh Matt for if there's any German decisions to make. Okay. Uh, can I just do ritual suicide because I'm a German? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I assume I'm. A, I assume I'm a Nazi. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, ritual suicide. I'm going to assume. Um, I'm going to assume uh, uh, mini warm up that you have to attack the front of the. To do the flamethrower, attack the front of the. Um... Hello. 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 So I guess we could keep, you might want to think, I guess we could think about bringing you over here because they won't be able to see you and you can go back. So, all right, that's later. All right, so now we have a 10. The, so the next one would be 10s. Uh, mini warm-up, you could interrupt with one of your aces and go, well, 10 of spades. So actually, you could be one of the jacks, actually. It'd be another jack if you want to interrupt and move your guys across the minefield or fire your mortar. If he says here, 
the fun of paused. Um... You okay? You're gonna interrupt. We'll just use this Asa. I guess many warm You've been on this. I guess I could send you a uh, use mortar. Okay. So who do you want to fire the mortar at? It's a five-inch template. You can land it on the sniper commander on the bunker. You can try you can five guys here, or you can hit this whole house full of guys, a uh, house full of the MG42 and the and the two other guys in there. So four total guys on building. Sweet. Okay, so now we don't have Chris's lovely guidance. Mortars. Please hold everyone as we look up some rules. Do, 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 do. Do you have the rules to this game? I'm just curious. Okay, so ba ba ba. Ba 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 ba. ba, ba, ba. So it's an indirect oh, fire. It's so page 11. Okay. <clears throat> Weapons listed in the indirect fire capability can target units that can't see and draw a line of sight to. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Unlike direct fire, which uses multiple dice to hit, you only use one die for indirect dice roll to hit. Roll it to hit target as usual if a success. So we roll, he said we count measure from the mortar to the. I um, mean, there's no need to go that far. I can hit it right there. So bam. So it is 23 inches. So that is short range. So that's going to be a five. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think. Let me check the mortar. Who's our mortar uh, leader for the Americans again? Oh, yeah. McMurray. Yellow. Okay. Um, okay. So roll, let's just roll and see what we get here. Six. All right, is that going to work? It's a five to hit. Now, you didn't get cover when you shot at the guys that were behind the hedge, but I got to think you get cover if you're in a building. I would even, think. Even for plunging fire. Okay, use the corresponding template. Okay, blah, blah, blah. The die shows the distance and inches the round deviates. Roll a 10 sided die close to the target point. The die shows the distance and inches the round deviates with the point of the die. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we still get a deviation. Then uh, roll nice and low. Two inches. Okay. That's not bad. I think you'll still hit some people here. So, yep. So that's good. So now, so now we're going to do Oh, that's interesting. Number of dice in the weapon profile. So the mortar has Oh boy. Yeah, boy. Mortar. Oh, Sorry. My bad. How many? So they just get one die? I guess so. So, any unit portion of the timid is hit with the number of die shown in the weapon profile. But only miniatures under the template can be removed as casualties. Okay, so let's roll for the MG42. So it's another shock. That's two shock on the MG42. That's good. And then for that. Student loan debt's going to lead to another financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, another shock. Another shock. Hmm. Hmm. So I think um. shock still applies to the whole unit. So I got to remember that. I got these guys kind of spread out, but that shock applies to even these guys over here. So these guys are shocked as well. I mean, it's pretty shocking. Let's let's be honest. Pretty shocking. I am. I have a lot of shocking. 
Okay, that was the mortar. All right, so you have another interrupt. Um, but I think that would be, I guess there's another jack to go to. So you could you could interrupt again before we go to the tens. I think, I guess you can interrupt more than once. Who's interrupting? Who's interrupting again? Oh, House of Hingus. What's up, everybody? Um, and you, you, you'll be... Oh, I'm waffling about the rules. Bigger Battles from Wiley Games, Fistful of Lead, Bigger Battles. So it's Fistful of Lead, as we've said, a much a time to skirmish, but this is bigger unit. So we got squads of guys going in, attacking this building. Germans, so Americans going here, attacking the Germans in here. We just fired a mortar round. Mini Warmut is commanding the uh, Americans. And you just send in a mortar round. So right now, so he's activated. So right now all you have is your commander in this squad if you want to interrupt or if you want to wait for the Germans to do something, you can do that as well. So you want to interrupt again? So he's using kind of like the last jack there. Squad to hedges by roadside. Uh, these guys have already rallied. So you got your squad over here by the minefield. I guess I better start looking at minefield because I have a feeling you're getting ready to cross it. Be careful crossing that uh, minefield. It looks scary. Spooky. It's so like you want to move that squad? Squad to hedges by roadside. No, I don't think you want to move backwards. Oh, or squad over the minefields. Oh, here we go. Over the minefields. So anyway, everybody, the woods. Um, House of Pingus comics, great battle reports, very detailed. I'll never get to that level. So that's awesome. So go check out his stuff. Um, where in the world? Carmen San Diego. I need, I, I guess, oh, you know what? I do have a PDF. Everybody hold. I'm gonna look at my field. Technology. So I just downloaded these PDF rules last night if someone's jumped on late. Um, Oh boy, that's a slow search. Slow, slow search. Wow, really? I can't find them. minefields. Okay, blah 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 blah. A hard task roll for each three inches they travel. And it's only gonna be like an inch or so, so that's good. Any miniature? Any mini? Oh wow. Okay, so. Let's give you show you some measurements here. You can kind of define what you want to do. I don't know how you can attack a bunker. I mean, I guess you could work your way behind the bunker. Because I don't I don't know what the I don't know what the rule is. Maybe we can I can look it up and see if they define bunkers, but if you just can only attack from the front, or can you attack from the back as well? I mean, there's always an entrance. I've painted an entrance here. This is an old uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call that? Packaging for a Flames of War mini. Um, so do you want to attack the bunker from the back? Go through the door? I guess we'll say you can do that. Anyway, it is eight inches there. So you're not going to be able to get there in one turn. And you're not going to, I don't think you're going to be able to fire into that. I would just say close combat. Oh, actually, he said if you can double move, you could get to him. So I guess we could try that out. You can. Double move and close attack the bunker from the back. I don't know if that's legit. What do you guys think? I'll look at bunkers and see. This is kind of important to figure out how you're going to attack them here. So minefields. This is going to be rough. You're going to do a hard task roll. Whatever that means. I saw, I, I'm really hungry for a roll right now. It's, I don't, it's good. No. Um, if failed. So if they fail it, they roll immediately on the wound chart. With that plus three modifier, oh boy, you'd be, that's each mini or, mi miniature is going to roll that. That's pretty cool. Nice and easy. What the heck is that? Okay. Bog checks. Okay. All right. Let's look up if bunkers is in here real quick. Mini warm up. You can decide. Kind of think about it if you want to attack the front. 
one of the back, or just you could even go around the bunker because they can't see you. And you could go attack the guys in the um, far hedge over there and kind of worry about that. Let your tank and engineer worry about the bunker if you want. So let's see if bunker is covered in the rules here. Unable to find it. So we can kind of we can kind of um, make that up. I can uh, declare that as we go here. Anybody have any thoughts, opinions? Let's see. What do we got here? House Angus, I bet you got some good ideas about how bunkers should be handled. Oh, attack from behind. All right, we'll we'll let you do that. All right. Ooh, look at that. So, do you want to do you want to attack them now this turn, or you just want to cross the minefield and let the tank get up there to fire next turn? But I'm going to go ahead and move them. They got to go through the hedge anyway, or through the minefield. So, while you're thinking about that, do you want them to go? Like immediately behind the bunker or not? Okay, and I'll keep you out of line of sight of the other unit too, so you don't get fired on. What's a hard task roll? Anyone know what that is? Hard task roll. Sounds delicious. It does, doesn't it? it does. I do have a chip in my tooth, so I hate to make that bigger. I got the same problem, buddy. Now we're gonna look at hard task roll. I'm anymore. I'm thinking about that. These rules are very. They're not as hard as it, but this is my first ever game of it. So, hard task roll. Hard task roll. Which apparently is an A. Plus. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much okay. This is going to be bad. So, we're going to have to roll a bunch here. So, I think I'm going to, uh, to bow out for a bit. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me hang and ba banter in the background. Yep. All right, man. We'll see you later. Everybody go check out the Extrovert Paints. Hippie. Hey, man. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, so we're just going to roll for each miniature for so fail. Pass. All right, so let's do these stands here. So he's going to take a wound roll plus three. Oh, boy. Let's make sure that's it. It says for each miniature, two wounds. Holy cow. Yeah, this could be bad. These are deadly. That's all right. That's how we're learning the game, right? Any miniature which crosses the minefield must pass our test scroll. Okay, well, here's what's interesting. When you roll a 9+, plus, which you did, roll a 10, plus 3, you get two wounds, you remove two miniatures from the unit. But this is said for each miniature, so that's kind of weird that you would remove two figures for when you're rolling for each miniature. So I'm going to... I'll kind of clarify that, but I'm going to say there's been one, one uh, wound here. So those two guys are failed and failed, so they're both taking wounds. So an eight and a five, so there's a shock. Oh. Oh, no, yeah, you just rolled two, so that makes sense. And uh, so that's going to be two guys out. And uh, an eight is another guy out. And a five is a shock, so I'll just go ahead and start adding those. Okay, this is not pretty. I guess um, I guess we don't go through minefields, boys and girls. <laughs> but that's how you learn the rules, right? So, uh, yeah, another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two more wounds. And what is that? Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. We've already lost... Uh, yeah, this unit's gone. Yeah. All right. So that wiped out the unit. Um, so, but now we know how that works. So the question is, do we back that up? Yeah. I guess we'll just say it. We'll just we'll just play it as it is. It's funny. So, um, uh, an entire American squad runs across. I will verify with Chris. I think I'm going to actually write that question down because it usually when you roll a um, 
instead of for every miniature roll it and then you're rolling the wounds but i guess whew yikes man no well at least hey hey mini warm out at least you don't have any shock anymore oh my goodness that's kind of funny okay so let me write that question down minefields and uh two casualties yeah i don't know if this scenario is um i think i need to get more you actually you do have more wait oh, that's the next turn you get that shoot you have another fortunately you have a whole fresh unit coming on here and i'm assuming you're going to want to bring them on this side but maybe go around because you'll get this engineer uh, i don't know if you can do mine clearing i'm, I'm assuming you can oh, okay don't do that again yes exactly <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, all right. So now, Matt, the Germans would get to go. Um, now it's just a oh, House of Ingus. If you're uh, if you're on, you can help us make the decision for the Germans. So the Germans are defending this road here. Um, so I'm gonna I, I am gonna have to start keeping track of who's done what here. I think his sniper fired right. Let me. I'm actually I'm just I'm getting a little confused. I thought I could remember, but let's just put down these units, these little just white markers here. And I know markers on the field aren't pretty, but the sniper did fire earlier, but the commander I don't think did anything. He can't really do much except for like rally. Oh, he can maybe rally those guys over there. Let's read about that. These these guys have not done anything, and I don't think yeah, the machine gun's not done anything. Okay, so that's we're still waiting there. He did something. The mortar fired, and <laughs> that unit's gone. So fantastic. All right. So I guess for the Germans, do they want to fire the squad? So the only targets still are the the Americans here that have shock. So I guess do we want to fire the MG42 or the squad, or do we want to rally? Um, if I rally and I do well, let's see what the commander can do for rallying. So this is the Germans. Um, the commanders get to do something here. They confer some sort of advantage to commanders and heroes 26. So um, House of Hengist, the, the, um, the um, rules are really quite straightforward. Just have little pluses and minuses here and just learning what people do. Okay. An unattached commander gives a plus one to any unit rally roll within 12 inches when the commander activates they can make any of the standard actions they can remove one shot mark from any unit within 12. this is not a required roll but uses the commander's action attached to a unit for an action if within a single move distance while attached the commander adds a two plus to the rally rolls hmm i almost wonder if that commander shouldn't skedaddle and get over here with the the main body of his troops and let that sniper kind of be on his own um and attached to one of the units or at least if not attached so if he's attached i wonder if he can do other bonuses and stuff probably not oh while attached commander moves when the unit moves they lose the ability to influence other troops okay Okay, let's see how far away he is from everyone here. So hold on. You can also have heroes in this game. This is way more cinematic, House of Fingus. Um, those combat comics you talk about. Okay, so he is within 12 of this unit who has some shock on. He can add plus one to the rally roll. Well, he can actually take it off. So for his action, what do you guys think about taking the shock off that one unit? And then they get to go again. Then I get a card immediately and they could open fire. So I'm going to do that. So that commander is going to activate. I can wait a second to see if somebody responds here. Of course, the mini warm is going to be nice and neutral. Plan for the Americans. And House Fingers, so I can kind of give you a second to respond if you think that's a good idea. Or I'll just kind of, as, as uh, Matt has joked, um, as I do, I just kind of uh, make it happen. So you're going to remove that shock. So that's awesome. Now, the, so that's that card. It's card activation, too, by the way. I'm reaching under here and getting a card. Next card up is a nine of diamonds. Um, there's two cards left. So, yeah, let's, um, 
What do you guys think about firing this squad on this unit over here? Adding some more shock to Mini Warmut's uh, squad that's had nothing but trouble over here. So let's see what happens. So again, kind of middle of the unit. So they're here, here. So the middle is about here. And it was 15 inches. Unfortunately, his rifles, so it's long range. Um, it is one, two, three, four, five, six rifles. <clears throat> now I get to fire all my dice because I took that shock away. So good job, everybody. And where's that other D10? Cool thing is I could roll these dice. Actually, should we do that? Let's do that. Let's see what dice I'm talking about here in a second. So it's a nine. Oh, so it's an eight to hit. He's got cover. That's a nine. The infantry unit. Um, does not have, this is led by Chris. Walkabout Games does not have um, any bonuses that'll help him. So it's right now it's a nine to hit. The card doesn't give him anything. Nines to hit. Is there anything else? Oh, I couldn't. So yeah, here's a question. So yeah, this is a tough one. Oh, you can only shoot once. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I don't know. So you, why wouldn't you, wouldn't you always take the action? All right, I gotta look this up. Let's let's look up the actions. It's kind of going by Chris's guidance there, but um, since he's not here to give us guidance, let's read what the actions are. Actions. Move at the double. So it says. A unit hero commander can only fire once in a turn. So we can put people in the ready. So we could do that. But I think we fire. They can react to the enemy's banner. The ready marker is removed at the end of the turn. So if you have a high card, I guess maybe put it on them at the beginning. Rally, charge, concentrated fire. Regular units only. Oh, oh. So I can form up. Is the only way to use concentrated fire and has benefits in close combat. I don't think I want to form up yet. I think just shoot. So it's really strange to me. So I get, oh, I guess I can move and shoot. That's pretty much all you can do double up. Unless you can form up and then shoot. <clears throat> but I'll have to look up form up later. I'll probably do that offline here. Um, all right, we're, we'll, we'll just do aim fire. So now instead of a nine, it's back down to an eight to hit. We're gonna use these double dice in here. So what do I say? We're at, um, Eights to hit. This one's a cocked eye. Ooh, two eights. So none of these are hits. These are, I roll a one, seven, seven, and two. So two close ones. So then you look at the inside die in here. So there's a little ten sided die within a ten sided die. I got these because I played with guys playing command decision. So I thought it was pretty cool. So they got two and a three. So you're going to add two shock to um, this unit here. So sorry, many warm up. You guys now have four shock. I don't know if there's a limit to the shock you can have, but that's really hurting. Boy, that, that is really, this is really tough here. Uh, I would design this scenario with another unit and with some smoke. I got to figure out how to do smoke and um, mine clearing. That's why I had the engineer in there too, to clear the mines. Yeah, I'm nervous about that engineer. So I think that engineer should, gosh, man. Anyway, so that's good. Four shock on there. Um, next, we have a four and a two. So we got a four. So the uh, Americans have a four, and that's pretty much the commander. Okay, so this commander, 
I wonder if this commander shouldn't get up there and attach to these guys. Because I can so basically you can remove one shock. Or you can go up there and attach. Actually, can you do that? He gets he moves in six. Yeah, you could just do that. So Mini Warma, do you want to attach your commander to that unit? Now he'll probably start. We'll have to read about what happens to him if he starts taking hits or not. <clears throat> um you know what i mean if he starts taking uh could potentially get wounded uh, this guy's fired <clears throat> if you attach him it gives you a plus two to the rally roll and remember if you get a if you clear off all your rallies you get to do something that turn um, and they have four or he can right now as an action just remove a rally so if you're still on, I appreciate you uh, playing the Americans, by the way, Mini Warm. Hopefully you're the one still on there. Um, <clears throat> maybe what we'll do after this turn, I'll uh, shut it down here and... Uh, Go do some stuff around the house and kind of maybe finish the game offline, do a little bit of report on it. So, um, so do I remove one or attach <clears throat> a next turn rally with a plus two? Commanders are 26. Yeah, this is a pretty bloody game. I mean, you got to really, I'm going to need more cover, uh, more terrain, I think. Um, Oh, Bane, what's up, man? What's up, suck eyes? Okay, so the question for you, Mini Wormut. Yeah, I don't know how many shock markers are allowed either. Um, so I was saying you could you could move up your commander and attach him to this unit, uh, Mini Wormut. So the next turn, he would have a plus two to the rally roll. And I assume that's a plus two to all the rally rolls, because remember, you're going to roll four dice. He has four shock. Um and but right now he can just take one shock away. So gosh, it's not really tempting. So boy, and it's tempting to get him up there with them because they are just suffering all kinds of problems with that, you know. And you can attach him back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could be technically behind the cover, but you're attached to the unit, so you're going to take, I guess, I don't know how that works. We'll have to figure that out. But Or just take one. Yeah, I agree. Move the command. I know I'm kind of selling it, but so he's going to move up here. I'm going to keep him out of line of sight. So the next turn, um, he'll be there. Um, okay, cool. Now the Germans get to go and reroll misses from the throw. That's your special ability as the Germans. Um, so the, the MG42 has um, two shock on it. Um, I think since they're since this guys are in such much so much pain, and that's the only one that's in range. The, the tank he's got an AP of one, but I wouldn't almost worry about firing on the tank. I think I think we should rally the try to rally that um, shock. So we're gonna rally it and. What is the rally roll? So five pluses. Um, does the machine gun have any unit traits that would help him do that? Oh, by the way, Bane, you have a unit here. Yeah, I think I think you did the right thing. I think we moved the command up there. Yeah, that's two dice away from the machine gunner. So I think I think he needs to try to rally. It's a five plus. Let's see what happens. Seven and three. Shoot. So he doesn't rally in both. That's really like I just need a fifty percent chance. But he got rid of one of them. So that'd take one dice away instead of two. So that's good. Um looks like Hangar Flying's gone. Just to say what's up, suckers. All right, well, that's everybody. That's everybody moved. Um, let's move up all these chips here. 
Well, I, I, I'm liking what I'm mini warm, but I'm kind of curious. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to know. It's kind of haphazard playing via somebody else, but I am curious kind of what you're thinking right now. And obviously you and I learned a very good lesson. Do not go through minefields. Just do not do it. Um, I'm going to also see if there's a way to clear minefields. Time is it? Well, it's three o'clock. Okay, we've been on here a while, so we've been on here for two forty. So that's good. Um, yeah, many warm. I'd be interested to know, um, and I'll need to see if we can get you. Maybe if you're, if you're interested, one time we can sometime maybe get you on here live so you can actually talk. It might be able to be the response will be quicker. I know it's also hard to um, do this uh, up like this, but I'm liking it. I, and I just, the scenario might have to have some tweaks to it and I'll have to learn about, so I'm going to learn about smoke and the scenario is designed. Both sides get off board artillery um, more than this. The, um, I'll have to read what they, what they're supposed to get. I don't think I'd give the Germans any more than they have. And I don't think the Germans need this tank on there. <laughs> Because really nothing much is happening to them, especially if the Germans move this commander, come out around here and get over here so he can kind of be closer to the rally. Um, like it almost seems, and, I mean, it's a bummer that the Germans lost their mortar, but I also don't know how many turns you're supposed to have in a game in this. So there's a lot to learn about this. I like it. I, I think it's a fun, it's got some fun little traits and all that. That's cool. <clears throat> Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, you know when it flows better, when you know the rules better, that that would also help. Well, again, I appreciate you <clears throat> being a trooper and putting that, um, being the Americans. Oh boy, <clears throat> so good stuff. I guess it's time for me to lose my voice and talk all sexy. Oh wait, let me put the robe back on. So I look like I was a professional. So everybody, thanks for um, hanging out. We're gonna, I'll do some, uh, probably, I'll probably see if Chris wants to get on and do some real short videos, kind of like how to play <clears throat> more distinct, like here's how you roll, here's how you do that. Kind of haphazard when you're playing the game, but it was great and I'm hoping it's helpful. So the robe. <sighs> So let's see, you said, um, pretty cool game. I agree. Also, learn if you can bring shock on the troops, it makes it tougher for other guy. Yep, for sure. Yeah, shock is super powerful on this. Um, let's, and let's look up while we're here, and let's, let's see what else you said here, but let's see if shock, yeah, can, yeah. But what's cool is you, you pull in that queen of whatever, queen of hearts, That Queen of Hearts was awesome. You got to bring your two guys back you lost. That was fantastic. Um, oh, yeah, you're welcome, man. Anytime. Well, I'd say that. I don't know if anytime. But, you know, you get it. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, maybe I'll just do this. It'll be simpler because I'm using that mic. Everybody's sick. Look at that. I'm good. All right. Ooh, that's some bright light. There. Right, let's look at the rule. I'm not going to show the rules on here. I don't know if uh, Wiley Games would appreciate that. Let's do a quick search for wounds. Hmm. Yikes. There's beasts and monsters in here because, you know, this covers all kinds of. Oh, man, that's a bunch. Holy mackerel. So it's got events, event order.
Hmm. That's cool. You can have random events. Okay. All right. Sample units and vehicles. Don't that. So yeah, it talks about wounds in a lot of places here. Oh, there is a number of wounds. Well, oh, that's beasts. Hold on. Previous. Beasts have wounds. Oh, because a beast doesn't have like individual people. Okay, that makes sense. So wounds for them are wounds. That's exactly what it says. What they call? Yeah, so a wound on a beast, that's a wound is what it is. But a wound on a unit, you're actually removing guys. So, okay. Just kind of going through here and seeing if there's a limit. If you... Wound is in this rule book a lot. Heal a wound. Um, sorry, ba ba ba. Oh yeah, I'm, we're not talking about wounds here. I'm sorry, we're talking about shocks. I shouldn't look at wound. Oh gosh, sorry everybody. Yeah, the wound limit. You did ask that. So the wound limit is the number of figures you have. A tank has damage four, so they actually take damage. We didn't even get into that. But shock is there a shock limit? Oh my gosh, it's even in here more. So flamethrowers have terrifying. Target unit automatically takes one extra shock in addition to other wounds. Units friendly to the target unit within six inches also gain a shock marker. Oh, jeez, dude. Oh, units friendly to the target unit. Okay, that's okay. Good, good. Sorry, everybody. I'm kind of looking at shock here. See if there's a limit to the number of shock you can have. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you have, a, like in our case here with our miniatures we're using, you have, like right now, rifles shooting seven dice. If you have seven shock, you can't fire. So you're out of luck there. Um, all right, well, I'm not seeing it right here, so but that's a good let me ask that question too of Chris. Limit on shock, and we didn't get into tanks. I may just bring on that stew just to get a tank battle going, just to try out the rules later. Okay, I don't even know if you're still on mini warm up. Oh, we got two people on. Who else is on? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, so what you do is you're putting the shocks on. Um, that's some good lighting there. You're putting the shock on um, the unit, and I have to remember that. So, so your unit is a squad. So in this case, you have eight guys in a squad. Um, and so your four shock is going to take four of your shoes. So you can shoot, but you're only going to shoot with three guns. Um, and it affects movement as well. One minus one inch of movement per shock marker. So right now you'd move one inch. So that's, you got to take those four off there. Oh, there's also a, min a minus one inch for low walls and fences, full action for high walls. Okay. That's cool. So really, I guess moving, so like your tank, I moved it full eight inches. It should probably move seven over that. That makes sense. I should have done that. Kind of takes your time to go up the crest. Um, I would show this QRS, but I think they're a little sketchy about that because you can really play a lot of the game from this. But I feel like there's a lot of other things they could have on this QRS, too. Um, I might have to see if there's some, one floating out there that, for some of the other things. I, I, I think I'm liking it. I think I am. I think this might be a... 
might be a nice way to approach this game, but I'm going to have to figure out how to play it because I, I would be struggling as the Americans to figure out how to get out here in the open. But man, you're taking hits. I mean, this is a deadly game. So anyway, anybody else jump on here? Jonas, what's up, Jonas? Thanks for popping on. Getting ready to close it out, but playing a little uh, um, fistful of lead, bigger battles. I just got it last night. Yeah, there's an option to live to fight another day and is removed from play if rolled ones. Is that? No, oh, you have to look at that. Up. Yeah, get that queen of spades will automatically recover and still get two actions. Oh, is that what the queen of spades does? Let's look here. I run them on these cards. Oh, that's right, because you had that. Yeah, that's huge, man. But you have to, it's kind of luck, right? I'm also glad Chris was here, because I thought you went through the whole deck of cards, and that was a turn. That'd be a long turn. Remove all shock from a unit, commander, or hero. Yeah. Guess what? That's way down in the middle. So what is this other thing you said here? Not sure if that core rule works for this game. Which core? Oh, the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that, but I'm, you know, I have a, a skin to the rules. So I think that's what I need to do now. I need to read the rules, read them all the way through, and then come back and work on this game a little bit more. I'm not sure if I'll do that live or not. I love doing it this way. I mean, it's just fun because, you know, especially with people on asking me questions and having someone else play money. It's great. Because um, it's, I really screwed up at the beginning, everyone will see. I was so confused that I had Minnie Wormut, who I said was playing the Americans, put placing the German positions. And I had Matt, who was playing the Americans, placing the Ger American positions. Whatever. Um, but I like seeing how you guys set up the troops, whether there's a right side or not, because you guys set them up differently than I would have. And so that's, that's the good thing about playing other people. I do a lot of solo. All right, everybody, it's been almost three hours. Um, it's a long time. So my plan is probably just play it by myself here to kind of figure it out, maybe get back on. Um, and uh, maybe just do some after action, maybe just do a couple bits and pieces. All right, lunchtime, beautiful lunchtime. Where are you located? Um, all right, awesome. This is private chat. Oh, that's probably someone asking me. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot, Jonas. Oh, man, who just jumped on? Getting ready to close out. So before I close out, hey, thanks a lot, Mini Um Reach out to Matt to find out how to get hold of me, and I can have you jump on here sometime, and you can play it live. Um, who's the third person that jumped on here? So we had Jonas. Jonas, thanks for jumping on. Um, we had Gun Barrel on here. He's a good channel. Uh, Hanger Flying, another good channel. James, um, uh, House of Hengus, great channel. Go check out his war reports. Oh, Modeling for Advantage, great stuff. Uh, Walkabout Games, Chris, he's really good too. I'm, I don't even keep saying everyone's really good because these guys are all good and have all the unique approaches. ID Jester jumped on. Um, he's really covering war games, board war games, more than not miniatures at all. Al Red Sox fan, good sports channel. Go check him out. And who are the other people that jumped on here last minute? All right, boy, well, everybody, thanks for coming on. Sorry it's at the end. Um, you know, watch it, skim through it, because the first, gosh, hour is just set up and stuff, hour plus. Um, I won't do that next time. Next time we'll be set up because, and, and I think what we can do is we can make a different video about how to create your units and um, kind of talk through that a little bit. All right. Um, and I'll do it. I need to do a video. This is kind of a summary so people understand what Bigger Battles is. And that's it. So thanks, everybody. Be good. Roll high, roll low, depending on the game you're playing. And you all be awesome. See you.